This podcast contains spoilers for Attack on Titan. Mainly season four, three, two, kind of all of it. So if you haven't watched it yet, maybe listen to this one a little bit later. Hey guys, welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration Series podcast, which is uh, a podcast that I actually haven't done one in a while, but we've got a new recording setup and we've got some exciting new guests and all sorts of exciting things. So you might, maybe, maybe there'll be more of these. I don't know yet. We need to see how this one goes. But um, today I wanted to talk a bit about, or we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Bionicle contests. Well, not necessarily Bionicle, even Hero Factory contests, just construction contests uh, in general. Um, we're going to speci- specifically, I can say that word, specifically be focusing on the Mock League, but we're also going to just have a bit of discussion about uh, just contests in general, um, you know, why you want to do one, what it's like to do a smaller scale one or a bigger scale one, whatever, uh, and just have a bit of fun. Also just sort of catch up, hang out with our guests, answer some audience questions and just have a good time. So we've actually got two guests today. Uh, and I'll introduce one, and I'll introduce the other. The first guest that I'd like to introduce today uh, is Mr. Ezreal the Blue Moon Mockist. How are you, good sir? Say hello. I'm doing. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, Ben. It's a pleasure to have you on, good sir. Um, and then the other guest we have today is uh, someone we've well, we actually I've actually featured both of you guys on BIS before, so I'm sure some of you will recognize these names. Uh, we have my snail eats pizza. How are you, good sir? Hey there. I'm good. Happy yeah. to be here. Oh, good. Oh, good. It, I'm happy that you're happy to be here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, for people who don't know who you are, do you guys want to just do like a quick introduction and just be all like, oh, hey, it's me. I do this stuff like burbity boo. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi, my name is Ezreal, uh, but you might know me from my handle as the Ezreal the Blue Moon Marcus. I'm a goon who does goon stuff that appeared out of nowhere last year. I've been been you know had my passion for lego reignited fairly recently so i'm here to hopefully for the for the foreseeable future just build and inspire other people yeah and nice I, no go on sorry i just, and, just i was just impressed <laughs> was, <laughs> sorry no no no, 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 no it's okay it's okay i'm gonna be impressed by your words too i'm sure it's just, it's okay. just yeah no go continue, continue. Uh, so um the handle i normally use is my snow eats pizza regrettably that's the name we got um <laughs> normally I go by msep or something of that nature but i do construction mocks and system mocks and other things like that on instagram and Flickr. and i've been at least in the construction scene since like 2014 so like at least posting stuff so it's been a little while but now we're trying to branch out and do some more interesting things so that's that's kind of what i do amazing incredible i'm also floored by your introduction <laughs> both of you have equal weight <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> tldr he has a snail and it eats pizza for whatever reason. it's it's, it's <laughs> very slow it's very slow he's, he's working on it guys he'll, he'll finish it eventually so you, we, we were talking before the show and you were saying that you you you, you came up with that nickname when you were younger so so, mm-hmm. so it was it was you just picking it out because it was distinctive right was was there any sort of like specific reason for it or uh, well, I mean, there's a little bit of a story. This was when I was uh, still into like Mindstorms and XT mocks and stuff like that. So I was huge into that when I was a teenager. Cool. Um, and I wanted to post them on the, the the Lego gallery that on the Lego website. And the username I had been using, uh, I forgot the password for it. Oh. So I couldn't log into it anymore. Uh, so I was like, I need to make a new username. So I need to think of something that I, that I won't forget. Um, because clearly I have an issue remembering things. And also, ideally, if people are looking at stuff and I do this enough, they will be able to recognize it's me. So I just threw a bunch of random stuff out, uh, a lot of them involving snails just because I like snails. And then <laughs> that's the one we ended up on. Uh, and then I stuck with it. So uh, and now I still have it uh, 12 years later. So <laughs> woohoo. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I know you're not a fan of it, but like whenever whenever I feature your stuff on Best, I'm always like, "Ah, oh, my snail eats pizza." Like, that's such a good name. So <laughs> it's distinct. I don't know. I get I get why you're like, "Ah, oh, it's not like it's not as I don't know." Well, it's not what you would I'm pick not a now. fan of it. I just think it's like a little. It's a, it's like hmm, I probably could have picked a more more succinct one, but right. nah, here man. we are. Nah, your your name is gonna go down in construction history. That's oh boy! Oh, <laughs> it's my snail eats pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Don't and you can't you can't forget about the one at the end. Oh yeah. Oh, Good that's point. just because. Oh, that that's out of necessity, not out of desire. Because like someone, this has been a problem since I made this. I, I made it on the Lego website, and then I was like, when I when I tried to get on YouTube, someone had taken it, so I had to put a mm-hmm. one at the end. Uh, and then same thing happened on Instagram. Someone did the exact same thing, and I'm like, come on, guys! Like this one's too specific. You didn't just think of this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now there's a one on the end of everything, but. 
All right. Necessity. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm amazed that I, I do like that it's the one and not like 16 because then it, I would think there'd be like 16 other snails that are eating pizza, you know? So no, it's like just one. Setting. It's just one really big snail. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you built a snail eating pizza mock? Uh, I did, but it was tiny. I don't think I have a picture of it anymore. Oh, it was okay. just like a little itty bitty one with a, like a mini figure size pizza. Oh, okay. Um, I guess at some point I should make like a bigger, more developed one. We just haven't gotten around to that yet. Maybe that'll be the next thing I work on after I finish what I'm working on currently. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be good. Um, All right. Yeah, beautiful. Let us move over to the very first um, topic or subtopic. I don't know what it's called. Um, this is Lego and Life Adventures with a with a fun graphic that I may or not may or may not throw up. But I still don't know how much editing I'm going to do. But anyway, there might there might be a fun graphic that Ezreal made for this. Um, so, uh, yes, Lego and Life Adventure. So essentially just, just a little fun catch up. What sort of stuff have you been doing in, um, life that's either Lego related or not Lego related? Just what have you been getting up to recently? So, uh, Mr. Ezreal, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to let us know what you've been, what you've been doing recently? Yeah. So I I guess I'll get the, the life stuff out of the way first. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think generally, you know, my life right now is currently quite uneventful, unfortunately. Uh, as outside of buying a, a new a new like mic setup for for this podcast specifically, which I'm really quite happy about. Nice. Uh, you know, maybe 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 I'll maybe I'll do my own YouTube thing in the future. But regardless, um, yeah, no, uh, it's mostly just been for me, kind of just do, doing my normal stuff. Sometimes I get, well, I guess this is more for the Lego side. Sometimes I get some of my my friends like um, recently. Uh, Ron, Ron Falkers, uh, mm-hmm. a good friend of mine. We'll, I'll, we'll mention him more later. Uh, he has asked me to do a bit, a bit of editing for some of his recent projects, and I am also doing a lot of editing for other people like um, Oksusu or OK Susu, I guess would be an easier way to refer to him. And you know, just kind of, kind of doing my thing. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great because like most times when you I uh, feature your stuff on BIS, um, I'm always like I always point out the editing you've done. So um, it's yeah. nice nice to know that I'm going to yeah. see some good edits on some other people's mocks. Yeah. yeah. It it's not it's not butt loaf level editing, but you know it works. Yeah. It works. Any editing, some good editing, as long as you're having fun. Um, it was it was cool because you said okay okay Susu before, and I was like oh I've seen that name before on mocks I've put on. It's nice to hear people say people's names. Uh, uh, yeah. on <laughs> someone else saying it because every time I feature someone's name, I'm like, it's, it's yeah, the, the, you know, so. the, yeah. The, the, there, there's a running joke between um, me and uh, Peter. You, you, uh, you might know him as Peter Shaker, mm-hmm. yeah, where, where like <laughs> he points out every episode when you bring up one of his mocks, he's like, oh, he called me Peter Shike this episode. He called me Peter uh, Shake last yeah. episode. I wonder, what, I wonder what's he gonna call me next time. <laughs> I heard you say it, and it's not even gone into my head. I'm terrible with names, so <laughs> Next, yeah, who knows what it'll be. Don't don't you worry about it. <laughs> I'm glad. I, mean, that... I always re-listen to the audio until you until you yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. To be to be honest, I probably will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and anyways, how's life going for you, Mister Misep? Uh, pretty good. Uh, I talked about this a little while ago, but I've been doing lots of cooking now because I, I just moved into a new house. So I finally like got done with like all the packing and unpacking. So I have time before I was just like surviving on, which isn't the most exciting thing, but now I'm doing some more complicated things again. So that's been, that's been a fun uh, way I've been spending my time recently. Other than that, been, been rock climbing a bunch, uh, cause I have time to again. And then when I, I haven't been doing that. I've been trying to get through some of the like the Netflix Marvel series um, with mixed results. Some of them are good. Some of them are not. a lot of them aren't. But we're we're making our way through. Apparently, they're coming off Netflix though in a month. So that's a that's another thing we got to deal with. But nice. That's that's the real life. And then for like Lego related stuff, I uh, I guess this 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 episode of the podcast will be out after this happens. But mm-hmm. right before we started recording, I was editing a picture for a collab that's dropping today. So Ooh. keep an eye out for that because uh, I'm really excited about it. But uh, mm-hmm. that'll hopefully be out by the time this podcast is out, unless something crazy happens. Then can you say what can you say what the collab is if it'll be out <laughs> before then? <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe before, <laughs> if it hasn't released before the episode drops, maybe cut this, cut this part out. That's fair. Um, 
But, uh, it, yeah, so what we're doing it on is, this is another student says there's one he did, he's, this year it was for uh, Robo Riders, but specifically the little wheel dudes that came with them, so like the little little robot guys printed on the wheels, we are doing that. Um, oh, cool. So we've all, a bunch of us, like 16 of us or 12 of us, or I forget the number, have made like our own little versions of each of the little dudes that are on the wheels there. So fun little bit of niche Lego history that, uh, he decided to flesh out and it got a bunch of us involved. So it's been it's been a good time and it's been cool seeing all those mocks come together and I'm really excited to see them up today. Now I'm just frantically trying to re-edit my picture because my original edit didn't look all that great. So now I'm trying to get it so it's a little bit closer to par with everybody else. That's awesome. I ch yeah, because I remember buying slices when they came out and thinking, um, or um, not slices, Robert, you, what you just said. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was always like, who are these dudes? Like, what is this? So... Yeah, that'd be cool to see some actual mocks of those. That's awesome. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a quickly talk Marvel for a second. Let's hope this doesn't go forever. Um, <laughs> where are you with the Netflix Marvel shows? Because I adore them. Um, so I'm uh, curious to hear what you're up to. I am midway through the Defenders, so okay. I've seen Daredevil one, two, Jessica Jones, uh, Je uh, uh, Luke, Luke Cage, Cage, and Iron Fist. Nice. And so Iron Fist was the one I just finished before this one, and that oh. one was. That one was rough. Um, right. And Daredevil season two, I, I had a hard time getting through as well. But the others I've, I've enjoyed. So. Okay. I, Daredevil has like such a strong place in my heart. And um, season one, I think is amazing. I actually really enjoyed season oh, two. Yeah, but interesting to hear that you didn't. That's cool. I think season three is like knockout. Absolutely incredible. So um, that's, that's, I think where I'm going to stop because uh, at the, by the time I get to that, I imagine they'll be off Netflix. So I think that's, yeah. that'll be what I'm going to stop at. I'm hoping it's they been, get put on Disney right. plus afterwards. I'm hoping that's I'm, my guess is they're probably that. going to like Hulu or something because oh, yeah. that'll fit the I guess that probably fit the, the the tone more and Disney could like pitch their bundle more because like if you want to get all the Marvel stuff you get Disney Plus and Hulu and we get more money. Good point. So. Good point. Yeah. Okay. But cool. It's good to hear that you're uh, enjoying some, but not so much the others. I can I can understand. I wasn't a big fan of the, some of the acting in Iron Fist, but I really enjoyed the story for yeah. Iron Fist. But I know that gets a bit of a bad rap. But but Daredevil, Daredevil makes up for it. So. Yeah, Daredevil, Daredevil, solid. Yeah, yeah, um, beautiful. Uh, I'll, I may as well. Did say you what, say what you were doing? No, Israel on, on Lego uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, actually, no, I didn't specifically outside of the the editing stuff. But uh, in terms of like Lego stuff for me, it's uh, so I'm in I'm in a country that celebrates a uh, uh, a holiday called Chinese New Year. So it's kind of so during this time, a lot of the the Bricklink stores kind of close. So I'm, I'm just sitting there the start of February, be like, dang it. <laughs> All the stores are closed. I can't order anything. I can't get anything done. Yeah. And, uh, but but they but they recently opened up, so I might I might, I might punch in an order um, for that soon. Uh, that we I've got some some things going on. I've got a a Vaki collab that I have planned with some some really awesome dudes. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah, with uh, Peter, Susu, Ron, uh, DV Mox, and Construction Diva, oh. uh, just to name name the other members uh actually a question i wanted to ask that's like related to you guys so mm. uh, so i'm personally not somebody who has like the money necessary to buy some of like the official lego sets although i'm really keen on getting some of the some of the new ones that i've seen so far mm. uh what what are your guys stance generally on like uh buying pieces have you ever had like a, a set you've seen that has like wowed you to the point like yeah i want to buy this for the set and not just for the pieces that are inside of it mm. I think uh, Ben, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, I think like nine times out of ten, if I'm buying a set, it's normally for parts. Um, there's some mm. sets I've bought, like the haunted house that recently came out. That's like the amusement park ride, that like dropping ride. Um, it's like the olive green haunted house. Um, I bought that for pieces because it does have absolutely incredible pieces in it, and um, more for my like system stuff. I don't know how great it is for Bionicle specifically, but when I bought that. I intended to build it and just see it and just sort of take it in and then take it apart. But the more I looked at the set, the more I was like, actually, this is really good. And it's still to this day is built. Um, and I actually adore the set. So there's been times where it's sort of been intended for that. And then it's gone over to, to the opposite. Um, but there, there's definitely some sets I've bought where I've gone, actually, yeah, no, I just want this as the set. Like normally like UCS sets, like the UCS Y-Wing, the, the Star mm. Wars set or, UCS uh, Republic Gunship, that Star Wars set as well. That's another one that I've bought specifically as the set because I'm like, actually, this looks lovely or I really enjoy this ship or whatever. Um, so sometimes. not as It's not as common, though. Which, 
would you would you say that was the case for you when you because because you mentioned the the last patreon podcast by the way you should if, if you want to see more exclusive content you should definitely subscribe <laughs> to ben's patreon um you you had mentioned that you had acquired like a a, a third daily bugle set i believe yeah um yeah so, so i you know go on no sorry yeah so i just wanted to ask like um when you first originally planned to buy the daily bugle set mm -hmm. would you did you originally buy it for the pieces or did you want to buy it just to have it like as the set itself yeah so ironically relating it back to the defenders i bought that because it had daredevil and punisher in it not i didn't just buy a 500 hundred dollar set for two minifigures but like i liked the look of the pieces i liked the look of the minifigures i really wanted the daredevil and punisher figure so i bought it for a variety of reasons and normally when i buy sets i tend to build it because i find that fun and then most of the time i take it apart afterwards um so I bought that with the intention of building it and then taking it apart. But again, that was the same thing as the haunted house. I was like, oh, I kind of like this. So I, I kept it together. And then I bought uh, a second one to, to take apart. Uh, and then, um, yes, I did buy the third one, but that one was for an investment. Um, so that I've not opened or anything. Um, but that's just because recently I've been trying to get into investing some Lego as well, just to just to see how it goes. Because um, I have had good luck with that in the past. Um, but normally it's more stuff that I find secondhand that I've been able to resell. Um, so now I'm like, well, let's, let's try and buy some stuff and like sit on it and see what happens. So yeah, that, that, that was the intention behind that. If that answered your question. Yeah. Right. Nice. Yeah. What about, what about, what about you, Masab? How, how, what is your stance on, on this topic? Uh, so last time when I'm buying Lego, it's for, it's for parts. Uh, so like, I think that if you were to look at the purchases I've had over the past, several years it'd be like most of them probably be break link uh sometimes there'll be a set wrapped up in that like uh, a lot of them like when i was in the bear magna and then so and nika collabs i bought the set of the characters i was revamping um that i didn't already have so like honestly most of them for me are going to be for parts at some point uh i did buy all of the the, the slicers uh which i no longer have assembled but just because i wanted them because i like them i think they're kind of neat uh, and they don't all have like the most useful parts. They have if they have some they have some decently useful stuff, but some of the stuff in there's pretty tricky to work with uh, unless you get kind of creative. Um, so those I just more bought to have because I thought that'd be fun to to look back through, I guess construction history and build them of that in their their original style. Um, and I like slicers, so there there's that. Uh, there have been a few where I had a similar thing. Uh, to what Ben was saying, where I buy the set because I'm like, I want fun, something fun to build, and I end up really liking it, keeping it built for a while. And the, for a while, those was those were like speed champions, because mm -hmm. uh, those those tend to have pretty good part selection for system parts. Uh, but there's a few of them from a few years ago that I just really liked how that end product turned out. I'm not like a huge car guy, so I, I just thought they were neat. Um, like I think the green Mustang one, I just like how that one looks. So it was sitting on my my TV stand for a while there. Before I eventually was like, I need to make a dark green mock, and these are the dark green pieces I have, so it's time to be sacrificed. <laughs> um, nice. Right now, I don't think I have any sets built. Yeah, I don't have any sets built right now. But... Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned speed champions because um, I'm the same. I don't, I'm not a big car guy, but mm -hmm. every time I bought a speed champion set for parts, it doesn't get taken apart for ages because they are absolutely amazing the way they build those okay yeah um but they're okay. also really good for pieces too for construction and system mocks really in my opinion yeah mm -hmm. they're, they're awesome yeah yeah um i'll very very quickly say my lego and life adventures and then we may as well move over to um uh the some of the main topic stuff um mm -hmm. i recently went to the lego store i bought some pick a brick which i feel like that happens to me every week because i I go there far too much. Um, but they, they haven't really had anything new at the Lego store for a little bit, but they had some new, um, uh, some of those new like leaf pieces are like tiny ones in orange. So I got a bunch of those cause they're mm. gorgeous. Um, yeah. And then just some other sort of like basic bricks that I needed for, for yeah. mocks and things. So that was, that was good fun. Um, and then life adventures, um, my best friend's moving to, um, Beijing for a job. So I was helping him move out. Um, which was an intense process, but um, I've discovered that I'm really good at packing things like really compact uh, and like maximizing space, which has been from like my experience with um, with uh, packing for like Lego conventions and stuff. So I've I've discovered an, a, a, a skill that I have, which um, I didn't quite realize I was I was I, I shone as well as I as I, I do with that. So um, that was cool, I suppose. 
Yeah. I mean, coming to you soon. Ben's moving company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. We'll uh, get some. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll get know some who to call when I need to move out. That's right. That's right. I'll have to get some um some fan art for that. Maybe I don't know. Um, no, that'd be cool. Um, yeah. So that's that's pretty much that. But I, I like a little. I liked a little discussion about sets there. Thank you. Thank you for that, good sir. Um, let's move over now to um the first little bit of our discussion about. Uh, Lego contests. So um, Ezreal actually approached me about this podcast in regards to uh, the mock league that happened fairly recently. He wanted to sort of discuss um, his experience with that with with um, Snail as well. So uh, who, whoever decides to go first, what is the mock league? Could you want to explain that to the viewers, let them know uh, anything that you have to, to say about what that is specifically? Yes. put Ezra on the spot because yeah. he, oh. he won it. So I think who better oh. than oh, to no. talk about it than oh. the guy that no. knows it best? <laughs> <laughs> no. You're welcome. Oh, I've been thrown under the bus. Uh, <laughs> Speed no. champions bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, just, just a brief description. So the Mock League was held uh, by by a community known as the Spare Parts Community. Well, well they were formerly known as the Lego Factory Community. Is uh, managed by five five guys from the Italian Lego community. Uh, to name them, it's uh, Jack Jack Engineer, Dan V, EMS Mocks, Care Creations, and Peter Shaker. So the league consists of thirty two total participants. So it's a it's a lot more smaller scale than something like the Bio Cup. Uh, and there there were five total trials or or rounds, and each of them was a unique theme given to us by each of the five admins or judges. And each round was a kind of 1v1 match between contestants that was separated into two brackets so that, you know, at the end, there'll be two people just kind of going at it, which was, you know, me and Masep here. Awesome. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah, it, well, it's it's cool. It, I mean, it's also interesting. I just, you said five guys and I started thinking about burgers. But um, <laughs> you, <laughs> it's 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 interesting to, to, to hear all that back and especially you comparing it to, like, bio cup and stuff so like uh obviously this was certainly a, a sort of long-term competition for the most part but how did it like differ specifically from a larger contest like bio cup like how whether that's like from the experience of that or just i don't know the, the like obvious differences between it in some fashion if that makes sense i um so i've, I've done bio cup a couple times uh and in terms of structure and i know that this may not be the most ideal comparison for some of the people that ran it, but like there, it is structured pretty similar to bio cup. I think that the thing that really made it different was the fact that everything was one B one and the themes were universal across the entire round. So every single contestant had the exact same theme or is like something like bio cup. It's divided up into the different brackets have their own sub theme. Um, but like for as someone in the thing, I approach it pretty similarly. It's like similar duration, uh, the themes were uh, a bit different in like what they were covering, uh, so there's some nice variety there. Uh, but the, the the main thing I think that's like the, the, the big big difference is the fact that it's it's a lot smaller. Uh, and then there's also the, the like the big one v one matchup thing, which is uh, you only have one guy you're up against, so only one person to worry about. Which for me at least made things feel a little bit different because you wouldn't have the worry of like. Well, I'm up against four people, and I know this one guy, he did really well in the qualifiers, so I gotta watch out for him. But this other guy, he could just, like, pull something out of air that was just amazing, so. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, I think they're they're both fun contests. They both felt kind of similar to me in the approach I took to it. Uh, similar levels of stress with trying to get all the builds done in time, but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so... Uh, unlike Masep for me, I only started getting back into mocking um, last year in March. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Bio Cup last year was the first kind of big tournament that I ever participated in Lego wise. And I definitely, um, you last year early on, is that I felt super intimidated to be competing in like a really large scale tournament, especially because that tournament is really well known for having some of like the best in the community come together and kind of kind of clashing together to see who could be the best of the best. So competing against some of the titans in the community like Joxon, Jaffa, Alex Mox is it, it, it's definitely a scary feeling. And uh, so the Bio Cup to me opposed to the Mock League. The Mock League, because it was a, a smaller contest with a, a smaller pool of contestants uh, and, you know, 
it's because it was well less well known. There were a lot less more prominent builders. That not no shade to the to the people who participated. They were all like really really talented builders. But it but it, there was definitely like less pressure in that kind of smaller contest compared to something bigger like the Bio Cup. But of course, like you know, there there were still some really really good builders like mentioned before in the tournament. So, um, with Maset being one of them, there was also Max Howell. Uh, mm -hmm. there was Fuzzy Builds or or Ryan. Uh, as we call him, and there was originally Cameron was also in it or Primus, but um, he actually had to drop out um, in the first round because of uh, you know personal personal plans and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's a shame we didn't get to see him participate, but you know just 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 to put in some like really like maybe big names for lack of a better term participated in the in the tournament as well. That's cool. It's interesting. Um, I liked what, I liked what you were saying about like almost sort of like the stress behind that with like BioCup, for example, because I've had people message before when it is BioCup season and they're like, ah, like I want to do it, but like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to win necessarily because there's these, like you call them these like mm. Titans, like Joxon and all that yeah. participating or judging or whatever. So like in terms of this being a smaller competition, do you recommend that people participate in like smaller competitions to kind of like gear themselves up for that? Or like, are there sort of like, I don't know, specific like pros or cons to doing a smaller competition that you would recommend to people specifically uh, in that regard? Yeah, uh, I, I definitely think that, you know, for those of people that you mentioned that, that when Bio Cup season rolls around that they're like, oh, I really want to participate, but I don't want to, you know, it, there's just too much pressure with these, uh, these, these really good builders. I think um, participating in smaller style tournaments that are formatted similar to lead to the Bio Cup where there's a, you're going up against other people. It doesn't have to necessarily be like a three-way round. It could be just a 1v1 match-off. But, you know, with the fact that they have their own theme, so you got to build it under these restrictions and stuff like that, is a good way to kind of test the waters and kind of get used to the whole Bio Cup format. And, you know, when you participate in these tournaments, it you are more than likely to improve to some capacity to, to, the, to your building style. Mm. And so you know, improving slowly and gradually and getting used to how, how the tournament is like, you will then have the courage to participate in something on a larger scale like Bio Cup. And I feel like if you do get more used to participating in contests like these, um, you know, that initial like pressure kind of just fades away because you're you're going to learn at some point that you're you're having fun with it and that, you know, winning does is not everything. Winning should always for these tournaments come second. For me... Uh, participating in both the Mock League and the Bio Cup, uh, the contests were generally, uh, for me, about having fun, in, uh, making friends or just interactions with other people in the community and just improving my skills. That was what came to me first. And prizes and anything after that, that was like completely came second or was just an afterthought. So yeah. I feel like if you focus on the, those three aspects first, you the, the, all that initial pressure is just going to just like fall off. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, that's interesting to hear the differences there. For 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 you, um, Misep, um, mm -hmm. what because you because you mentioned you'd done Bio Cup before as well. How how was that different for you doing Mock League versus Bio Cup? Uh, I mean, I guess the 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 main difference here is how there's like in, in Bio Cup there's that big qualifying round, so it's just tons of people just going free for all. Um, and then with with Mock League, I did like how because it was only going to be open to 32 people and exactly 32 people signed up for this specific instance of it. It was nice just to first round, get right into it. Um, like the competing against someone one V one. I felt that it, the intensity of it kind of ramped up more quickly. Uh, so I liked it, but like my, my take on con uh, contests like this are, uh, I guess similar to Ezreal's in some way, but basically like he went bio cup and with this one but this one i didn't think i was going to make it very far and that's honestly how i look at bio cup too is i don't expect to get too too far but i still want to join because i think it's fun to just try it just let's see how far i go i might make it only one round or two rounds but it can still be a good time regardless uh so for me like honestly it felt pretty similar in terms of the like the level intensity i was bringing to my game and also just uh i guess the the, the overall experience it was uh, a lot of the themes are pretty different in what they were looking for than what Biocap normally does, so that was a that was a nice like change of pace. Mm. Um, but I, I my my take is go for any of them, the big ones, little ones. You don't think you're gonna win? Just try anyways. Uh, especially in these where it's a repeating round where there's some progression. If you do make it further, you will probably be improving your skills because you'll have to, to 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 keep up pace with who you're who you're gonna be up against. That's um, awesome. And I and I feel that like at least with Ezreal, he 
he had this nice progression curve as he was going through the contest where things kept getting better and better and better. I remember his 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 mock for the music round just like was was when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is I have no words. This is too good. So <laughs> you flatter um, me, sir. Nice. Thank you. Uh, I try. It, it, I mean, it, I, I like to see the progression because like the first few he had were, were, were pretty solid and they just kept getting better and better and better. And I feel like contests like this allow that to happen on a really accelerated time frame. That's awesome. It's great. It's great to hear both of you talking so much about how people are growing in it and the fact that both of you really wanted that level of growth out of it and we're seeing it in each other. Um, I think it's really cool hearing how much of a sense of like community there is in it, but also like a sense of fun because I remember always, always saying that when, when buy a cup stuff was happening of just being like, yeah, just, just, just have fun with it. Cause that, that there is so much room to have fun with this sort of stuff. So yeah, it's really cool to, to hear how much, how much fun you guys were having with it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, do you guys want to dive into the specific rounds or trials, whatever they're called, uh, for the actual contest now? We can kind of go through each theme yeah. individually and um, either A, just discuss the theme and your sort of process with it, and maybe that could inspire people as well, which is always what we like to do on this channel. Um, and yeah, just hear your experiences um, throughout the contest, if uh, unless there's anything else you wanted to specifically discuss about like contests in general in that sense. Yeah, no, I think this is a this is a good point for us to kind of dive into the specifics of the of the mm -hmm. mock league. I agree. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So, so the first trial that we're gonna bring up is the trial that Jack put out, and it is called Switch to Win. So the premise behind this trial was that all the contestants had to make a mock that could transform in some capacity. So by transform, what he was thinking of was either you either make the whole mock in itself transform. Or you make one specific aspect of the mock transform, but the rest of the mock can stay the same. Cool. So I'm just gonna put this um, out for the for those of you listening. Uh, we're not gonna go too in depth in this trial because uh, the mocks that me and Maset made, which are Maverick and Ramjet Slicer, Ben has covered these before in you know episode 231 of the Bionic Conspiracy series. So if you want more in depth about that, go check that out. Look at these plugs. But, um, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and all the yeah. numbers. <laughs> I don't even yeah. remember the numbers. Good on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh I'm I'm mine's a bit more um generic for my the mock I made, but I'm curious to hear, Masep, how uh you approached uh, this trial specifically. Uh yeah, so this one so I've done Transformer mocks for a long time now. Uh some of them were system based, some of them were construction based, just been at it for a while um so this one wasn't like too out of my my wheelhouse in terms of what i was comfortable with uh, the thing that really caught me on guard was the fact that this was the theme though where i was like i, mm. I didn't really know what to expect getting into it yeah. and they hit us with this right off the bat i was like oh <laughs> interesting yeah. okay yeah. um uh, not what i was expecting yeah uh, so, just, sorry just just to, to mention something i think the reason why the judges chose to open with jack's trial specifically is because they wanted to well, at least what I heard from this is that they kind of wanted to start off with a theme that most people would generally not have experience with. So some capacity, mm -hmm. like, you know, you're not, we're not Yuri Facio or Dr. Scorpion X in terms <laughs> of like building bioformers for a living. We, uh, so, so they wanted to have it so that everybody had an equal chance to put, to put out something that was good. Mm -hmm. So I think they really succeeded with, uh, this kind of unorthodox theme for the first trial. I, I think it was a good one to start with, um, just because it was like, okay, guys, we're we're not playing around here. We're doing we're doing something crazy. Um, for for me though, the way I normally prefer, like approach transforming mocks is, uh, it, there's kind of two different ways. But the main way is like if I'm trying to base it off an existing transformer, I'll look up stuff about them to see if any of their like transformation functions, uh, kind of like get the get the creative energy flowing. Um, and then I'll like pick a specific aspect of the transformer. In this case, it was like how the feet became the like uh, jets on mine, and that was a specific transformation function. Focus on that, and then once I can get that one little area working well, I just kind of build out from there. Uh, that can work really well in some cases. Sometimes you run into the problem where you have only half of your build works. <laughs> uh, so for me, I know I definitely had some trouble getting the second half of mine to to fold up exactly what I wanted to. Uh, it ended up being a little bit more like bulky than I was expecting to when it was fully folded up, but it, I think it worked out okay for me here. Um, I might, in the future, were I to redo this one, make the overall thing a little bit larger scale so I had more room for everything to fit together. But uh, yeah, basically, I just started with the started with the feet, 
figure out how I could get those to go where I wanted to, and then just built around those until I got something I was happy with. That's awesome. It's interesting. It's interesting to hear to hear your process with that. I remember um, ages ago, I wanted to build a um, like a, a sort of spaceship mock, and I I don't think I'd ever really built a spaceship mock before, and I remember really like not knowing where to start with it, and just sort of like trying to talk myself through it and just be like, okay, well, like, I don't know, how could I do this bit or how could I do this bit? And I like caught myself saying, I wish I had like a frame that already existed that I could just sort of build around. And then I was I'm like, well, why don't I just build a frame? And then I, and I sort of built the loose frame for it. And then from there, I was able to just sort of sp- spring out from that and do like the cockpit and the, the fins or the whatever. Um, so it's interesting to hear what you were saying of like examining other transformers and then from there, um, using that as like that starting point and almost that starting point being kind of like the hardest part of the mock. And once you, once you began, you had a good kind of kicking off point. That's really cool. Yeah. It, it's interesting to point out here, but another restriction for this trial specifically was that they limited how like you, uh, to, for lack of a better term, there were some restrictions to how the transformation must be handled. Oh, in right. Which one of, yeah. One of the big ones was the fact that you couldn't have something fully detached from the mock if you as part of the transformation so it had to be completely attached at, at some point in the mock for the transformation so i think if you see things like transformer toys and some other like uh like transforming mocks they'll have like maybe a weapon that they hold in their hand but in the transformation they attach to a different part of the uh the transformation yes. when when they go from their robot to vehicle boat you couldn't do that for this trial everything had to be intact in some point during the transformation in order mm-hmm. to have it count legally as a transforming mock. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. I remember some of us were trying to game that. I, I threw out some suggestions where I was like, okay, but what if we have like the sword attached to one point and then you disconnect it from that point, but it's still attached to another point and then you swing it around and reconnect it and detach it from that middle point. And they're just like, ha, no, that's, <laughs> that doesn't work. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> I thought I had you here. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's, I like that. It just didn't, cause, um, I know with like BioCup specifically, uh, a lot of the judges like it when people can twist the theme, which is why they're often really broad where it's like, oh, here's Mm -hmm. food. And it's like, okay, I'm going to build a Subway sandwich as my mock. Or someone's like, well, I'm going to build a spider because it's food for a larger predator, you know, something like that. So I like, I like that you're trying to like think outside the box because like we were saying before with like having fun with it and stuff, like there's, there is a good element of fun in that. And it's nice to be a little like cheeky and be like, I'm technically following the rules. I just bent them to my will, you know? Um, that's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> yes, but also no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, for you, Ezreal, with uh, just with what Maset was talking about before with uh, his like inspiration and stuff, what sort of stuff specifically mm-hmm. like inspired you for making a transformer? Yeah. So the, so um, for me, my, my, my mark for the, Round one was to make a robot that turned into a turret, and that's kind of kind of a, an idea that was not original. I saw a lot of other people who did similar mm-hmm. things where they had a robot that could turn into a turret of some kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this was an idea that Ron actually suggested to me. He's like, you know, you don't want to make a a vehicle uh, like a robot that can transform into a vehicle, and I think that's what like people kind of cater towards when they hear the a theme such as bioformers or transforming mocks is that they want it to be a robot that can transform into a to a vehicle of some kind. So mm. I think one of the main inspirations for me was that um, Max Howell actually posted a whip of his first rendition of his bioformer, which was this mock that had these like three hand claws using the spike pieces that I also used in my mock. And they were claws that could turn into feet. So, uh, and it's kind of similar to what um, Ryan did for his, or Fuzzy Builds did for his uh, round one mock. Mm-hmm. And the kind of the seal, what kind of sealed the deal for me is that um, I was actually re-listening to one of the uh, the Pokemon Johto openings, because uh, because that because I because you know the Johto series had some really good openings, and there was a there was one scene where like Scizor actually flashed onto the screen, and that kind of sparked the whole idea. Like, what if I remake Scizor's claws for this mock? And that's nice. kind of and I kind of combined that together with the uh, Max's original concept, and that kind of spawned my mock. And I remembered like some at some point during the building process, I was like building my mock i was like okay this is good but how can i make the transformation look seamless and yeah. what that means is like how can i make it look like it doesn't transform and i think that you've mentioned like in previous episodes like a mock is cool if it can transform but it's even cooler if you see it for the first time and you don't think it can transform right yeah that's awesome and i love i love to what you were saying just then how 
you're watching Pokemon of all things, and that gave you inspiration for a Transformer. Like how inspiration came in the com- most like <laughs> unrelated, weird way. Um, cause, uh, and especially like with what you were saying, the step of like, oh, I was looking at Transformers and it gave me inspiration for Transformers. So, um, I think just in general, it's just like a, uh, just, I don't know, something that I'm certainly going to take out of this. And I'm sure other people could too, of like, you don't necessarily have to be looking at related stuff to still get ideas. Um, and also just how, correct me if I'm wrong, that was just like on in the background. And then suddenly you got that spark of inspiration for it. Like how it can come in, in, in any place. You just have to sort of be open to it and to, to, to notice it, I guess. So that's, yeah, that's really interesting. That's really cool. Yep. Yeah. Very awesome. Um, so, uh, is there anything you guys would have done like differently with, um, the Transformers that you made? Cause it sounds like you're both pretty proud of what you did really. Um, on mine, I know at least like, I don't completely agree with this, uh, criticism that I got just to, to be a hundred percent honest, but I know mine, yeah. they're like some pretty narrow, the limbs on the, the upper and lower limbs, like, or I guess the, like the, the upper arm and the upper legs were pretty narrow on mine. Uh, that was part of that was out of necessity because it was like so important to get everything to fit in one compact space. And I like there was no like there was very little air left in the build when it was all folded up. Mm. Uh, I think that it might have been better in some way to like make the overall thing a little bit larger so we could flush those sections out. But at the same time, I kind of like I do like the aesthetic of having like something that's got like a decently bulky body with like a narrow section of limbs to like a big bulkier section. I think it's really striking. So like. My kind of thing was I got really frustrated in the middle with getting that thing to fold up and it just like it worked. But it was a pain to figure it out. I think that if I'd given myself more room to work in, it probably would have been a little bit easier to work around. So maybe something like that would be probably something I would change on mine. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. And what about you, Ezreal? Yeah, there were a few aspects of mine that I didn't like. I think the main thing that really bugged me was I really disliked how the torso was designed. It was essentially two system sections connected by a single CCBS bone. And it worked for like the transformation I was going for. But God, it looked so awful from like every other angle that I looked at it. So I, <laughs> that's something I really disliked. Uh, I guess another thing is that I could have made the, the turret it transformed into look a little bit better. It looked kind of kind of blocky and kind of, you know, helpless for lack of a better term. Like it looked like it couldn't move. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and I was also really kind of sad that the, because for the for the turrets that are hidden within the the knees and the legs, the the two of the guns are actually pointing upwards in its robot form, and I was like, ah, oh, oh, that looks so bad. <laughs> I, I, technically, I could have folded them downward so that they were pointing downwards, but then like the the knee section becomes exposed. I'm like, oh, that looks even worse. And I kind of had to bite the bullet there. So yeah, but yeah, th- those were the main parts that bugged me. But other than that, it, I'm relatively happy. I'm thinking about remaking maverick but not as a bioformer kind of kind of just its own like mock i haven't thought about it yet but it, it's cool. on my list oh nice oh well, that's good to hear um unless you guys have anything else to say about round one i think there was some pretty awesome discussion about building transformers um did you want to move over to trial number two or was there anything else you wanted to cover for that no nope. i'm good uh, number two. Yeah. beautiful all beautiful. right do so, uh you, so you did a great job of introducing it before yeah go ahead good yeah. sir all right, thank you. Yeah, so the next trial is by EMS Mox, and it is called The Hive. So as the name implies, this trial was about making mocks that are vaguely insect-like in their design. Um, so I, I was a bit conflicted for this trial because I, I, I'm somebody who's a real big fan of JFA. I love the Plague Mech series. So for this, when I heard that the trial was to make something look insect-like in design, I was my first immediate thought was to make a Plague Mech. Nice. Uh, and that's what I was conflicted is because uh, one of the scoring criteria for this for this contest is concepts uh, co- concepts rated on their originality. And plague mechs, no nobody in the community probably know doesn't know about a plague mech. So in in that sense, it's a bit of an unoriginal concept. Mm. So I was very conflicted between deciding whether I wanted to do a plague mech for this trial or if I just wanted to do a generic insect kind of mock on its own. Fair enough. What so, about what what about uh sorry. No, no. You, you no. go ahead. I I was actually just going to ask um and mess up myself. So we're okay. both asking you good sir. What about you? How was it for you? Um okay, so in comparison to the first one, I thought this this challenge was a lot easier to work with cuz like insects there's there's so many different kinds of insects you can work with and like from a technical perspective, 
you can be a lot more flexible in how you approach them with the transformer. With the transformer, you've got to like figure out, you got to plan really far ahead how you want to make everything work together. And with the insect one, it's you, you, you pick a bug, you make the bug. Um, <laughs> for me, the, the concept I was originally going to go for this was a lot more interesting than what I ended up with, actually. But we had to, as was the case with all of these, I was on a bit of a time crunch with trying to, to, to get everything ready to move while I'm working on these. But um, with this one, I originally was planning on doing like a sort of like a magician or a wizard that was also an insect. And they had this thing thing where he was like going to have like an alchemist, like bottles of chemicals that it would combine to make like bombs and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, and originally, that was what I was originally planning on doing. Uh, and then I kind of got into the build and I was like, you know, making clothing for something with like six, uh, like four arms uh, is going to be, it's going to be a pain. <laughs> so maybe we just, maybe we just make a really solid like bug or something or make it like a lancer that's got like a spear and then we got further and further along, and I reached out to a few people for feedback on it. Um, where like I had this thing, or it was it ended up being looking pretty similar to what my my final one was. But instead of having the mantis arms as its primary arms, it was just holding two those those mantis blades as swords. People were like, "Oh well, maybe you should just you should just make it a mantis." And I'm like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> so from that point, it ended up just being okay. Let's like try to make it so it's combining elements of a lot of predatory insects so i tried to like throw in the like the the i think it's the, the thorax uh of that resembled like a a wasp or a bee yeah. where it has the big stinger and then of course you've got like the obvious mantis blades on the front uh and the head like resembles an ant and then like the the the, the mandibles are like from a beetle so i was just trying to mix in lots of predatory insects into it so it was kind of like an amalgamation of several predators so my concept was more complicated than it ended up being in the long run uh but sometimes you've got to like change your approach when you when you're on a time crunch and you just don't necessarily have time to figure out the t the, the specific details for a really complicated concepts and it's better just to simplify things for a cleaner overall finish yeah it's interesting you mentioned the time crunch thing because like certainly now like working a full-time job myself like it's mm -hmm. amazing how much time affects your creative work um, like mm -hmm. when you're just doing something as a hobby and you're just like, I got all the time in the world to do it, you know? So yeah. do, do you have any advice specifically for like dealing with, with time with that? Like whether you learned it from this or just in general? Uh, I mean, <laughs> so this is something that kind of carry through, especially for the later rounds. Cause the first round I had a decent amount of time to work on it, but like round two, three, four, and five, I, with holidays and moving, it was just like, I'd only had a couple days to work on each. So what I started doing was like, how can I take like elements of other builds that I've like used before, clean those up a little bit and then combine them with other ones into my final concept. So like my round four, when I first skipping around, uh, it, it had two figures where one was a, one was a human, one was like a robot that it was attached to by a computer. Um, the human was an old whip from something I was working on from ages ago that I couldn't figure out how to finish. So I just took it. And I was like, I need a, I need a human figure. Let's repurpose this one, change it so it fits the theme better. Nice. Um, and then like another one, I used, I used like thighs from different builds or like reuse different. Like I kind of approach a lot of them the same, where I, I start with the hips and use like a pretty similar structure. So if you're working on time crunch, I think the, the important thing is figure out the concept you want to go with, uh, and something that's reasonable to achieve in the time that you've got, and like focus on executing that. And it doesn't need to be super complicated. Just like Focus on f finding ways to take elements that you already have, repurpose them, and combine them in, in, in a new way, and then really executing that, that, that concept solidly. So, like, sometimes I think people like to focus on technical complexity uh, when, in reality, you can get something done with one piece instead of 20. Uh, so that's what I try to do is, like, okay, we've got one piece that'll fit the job up like a leg. Let's use that so I can get the leg done and really execute this overall mock as a whole cleanly rather than spending a lot of time figuring out how to put a leg together. So that's kind of a roundabout way of describing it. But like I try to focus on concept rather than technical, com technical complexity. And if that means repurposing old things or building something new, that's how I try to go about it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. And what about you, Ezra? How was it to um, sort of work under that time limit? Like, did you like, I don't know, reach out to someone for advice or did you, um, I don't know, how, how was that time crunch thing for you? Because I know that's that can be a big thing for some people. Yeah, so 
So I ended up actually making a plague mech for for this round. And of course, you know, if I had to contact anybody to to design a plague mech, of course I'm gonna go to the to the progenitor, the great the grandfather himself, Jafa. <laughs> nice. Uh, so so my uh my plague mech for this round was actually loosely inspired by two of the plague mechs he's made before, which were Harvestman and Huntsman. Nice. So Har Harvestman was the one that he made for the Iron Builder challenge. It was that giant four-legged spider, and Huntsman was that a uh, really long, tall, long-limbed uh, plague mech that was mostly gunmetal and black. So I was taking a few concepts for that, and I had to contact him because, like, yo, how did you do these legs for this mock? Because <laughs> Uh, I want to do something similar for this, and he had told me that the the legs themselves were actually fixed in the in the angle that they were in, and they could only like move like side to side, and maybe like the the four limbs could move up and down. But more other than that, they were primarily stationary. Okay. So, I drew some sketches. I showed him some concepts. I told him that the um that the 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 mock I was making was similar in design. Uh, similar in design to the Exo Force set, Striking Venom, where it had like uh, the giant four legs and it had like some artillery on its back and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And and it was like, okay, here's what I he told me. Here's what I suggest you should do. Uh, and then I kind of took what he said when I was designing it bit by bit. I showed him the progress I was making, and it, and overall it kind of because I think I would generally had a lot more free time to work on my mocks than maybe some of the other contestants. So I didn't really feel as pressured to um you know get this done quickly necessarily but i definitely um it was definitely stressful because i was uh teetering on the the whole to make or not to make a plague mech concept for like a good few days of the first week mm. okay cool well yeah it's good it's good to know that you reached out for help because i think that's always uh, it's, it's always good to 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 consult to consult others, I think that's always just a helpful thing to do. But it's also interesting to hear you, the, the the deliberation itself actually took a bit of time as well. That's cool. Um, yeah, nice to hear about both of your processes in that sense. Is um, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about specifically that you did for this bug-like round, or I don't know, any advice that you might have for people who are looking to build sort of bug-like mocks in that uh, in that regard? Yeah. So uh, for those people who want to build more insect insectoid insect-like mocks. Uh, whether it be plague mech or not, I think generally looking at real life insects and study some of the uh, key features that are unique to them, and seeing how you can replicate them with the pieces you have is definitely a good way to kind of get some inspiration. And you know, look at other like insect like mocks as well, whether it's the plague mechs or maybe uh, uh, some of the other. I, I believe Joxon recent last year he at towards the end of the year he made a very insect like mock in design. Uh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was like a dark blue and um, white one. I can't remember his name, but you, you'll if you go to Jackson's Instagram page, you'll probably see it. Yeah. Um, and think about what kind of insect you want to make, and whether you want to put a spin on it or not. Do you want to make it as like a super realistic, accurate as possible insect? Do you want to make it more humanoid in design? Do you want to make it robotic in design? Or maybe you want to make it just some giant titan of a behemoth, like Buffoon does with his insect series. <laughs> And and even recently, some of the um, some people posted like an insect collab that they did, where they did very super realistic oh, that was insect. Great. Like, yeah, that that was awesome. People have been really killing it this month and you know, <laughs> just this start of the year. So, you know, just just look around for just different stuff is, is my general advice. Yeah, beautiful. And I think that on these, so insects generally have like their carapaces and shells that are like continuous, like continuous piece of exoskeleton. Uh, and I think this works really well with CCBS and system because a lot of those you can just get large, very smooth pieces that cover a large area of your build, and that'll work pretty well as an insect. So, like, relying on larger pieces, I think, can help, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I may not agree with that, but that, that's something I try to do where, like, over the legs, we have just a large CCBS shell that's just representing a single piece of exoskeleton, and then, like, same over the, the body, it's covered by one piece. Um, and then also, with at least with bionicle parts, like some of the prefab limbs and stuff, I feel like a lot of those you can kind of read as insect-like where they have lots of ridges that sort of resemble like hairs or like little little barbs on insect legs. So maybe use, utilizing some of those uh, too can help you with that. And that also keeps the, 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 like the sides of it down too because you're only using like one or two pieces for one single section of the build. Uh, so that's kind of my, my take on that. Beautiful. Well, thank I, you. I, oh, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. So I just... Uh... 
I completely forgot that like I wanted to talk about some of our favorite mocks from each round. We didn't do it for the first oh, yeah. round, yeah. But but generally, I just want to give a shout out to the two mocks from the from the second round, which was by uh, Ryan Z or Fuzzy Builds. He built this uh, beetle beetle and bee like uh, insect mock. They're humanoid in design, but they're kind of they're they're really well designed. And surprisingly, when he told us like um, uh, about it design about how it was designed, he actually said that the the frame for these mocks were made using just purely uh prefab torsos oh, and cool. i was like no no way and i was like yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and the other one that i wanted to to really highlight was uh max h's niazes revamp that mm -hmm. one i thought was a really really good because I, I mean generally the revamps are probably going to score lower because of their of an existing care but i don't care this is this is an awesome mod <laughs> mm -hmm. no, i think this does a lot of what i was talking about i'm looking at it right now where it's he's covering large sections with individual pieces and i think that really adds to the aesthetic of it and really like sells the the insect nature of it same with using all those skull masks on it with the the ridges on the the shell i think that just works great yeah very cool beautiful well um thank you both for sharing your uh your process and your thoughts and all that stuff with that um so that i think takes us to the end of that second trial there but for now let's take a quick and cheeky uh small break here which will not be very long for for either of us i'm sure and then we'll uh, dive into the other few rounds there and we'll also answer some uh, audience questions so uh stay tuned there'll be more in a hot second erin did you kill the colossal titan all right we're back um and we're gonna just dive into trial number three e ezreal can you hit us with that sweet explanation please yes sir so so trial number three is by our good boy peter shaker yeah. and his trial was called the centerpiece and just like the previous trial it was it's it's pretty evident from the from the trial's name what it's about so this trial was mainly taking building a mock around a specific piece or a specific technique that involves uh, a, a few pieces um so uh my 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 mock for this is was also featured on this episode so i won't go into it too much so why don't, why don't you take it away mr misep about what your mock was about all right um this i mean i think this theme was honestly my favorite one just because it leaves a lot open to like you can do mostly whatever you want with it and i guess the music one is similar but like it opens itself up for a lot of different like art styles with the builds and different themes and i think that a lot of people like really nailed this one and did some really cool stuff with it but as far as mine goes uh mine I spent a long time just pulling random pieces out of my drawer and just looking at them like, is this the one for me? I can't think of anything to do with that. Yeah, how about this <laughs> one? Can't think of anything to do with it. And eventually I got to the point where I was like, well, you know what would be cool? I don't see people using X-Pod containers very much. So let's use those as wheels. So I will make like a car that's got four of these. Um, and it's got like crystals growing out of it and it's just this like weird robot crystal car thing I think that'd be a fun concept um, And I think it was Alex like Alex mocks Alex that not that Alex not not the other Alex's because there's a million Alex's But <laughs> I ran it by him. I like sent the, the drawing and the concept to him and he was like, hey You know you're, you're the point of this is to like highlight a single piece and like the car is gonna have four wheels so let's Maybe if you make it a bike, like the the wheels are going to take up more of the space in the bike, so it's going to be more focused around those. And I was like, well, if I'm making a bike, a bike needs a rider, so we'll take this crystal theme and like expand it beyond just the bike and make the rider have like crystal armor and like a crystal sword, so it's kind of like a knight on a horse, but a, on a bike instead. Uh, and then just kind of I just kind of took that and ran with it. And this one in particular, I remember I think I spent the longest on this one out of all of them because. The rider took me a while to get to where I was happy with it. The the bike took a while to get to where I was happy with it. And like the bike was a really technic based one on the inside. Uh so it, it definitely took me some time to get back into the swing of building with technic, because I, I haven't done that super super hardcore in a, a long time. So it was fun getting back into that. But yeah, it this one was this one was uh, a lot of fun and I tried to like focus on a really, really like simple color scheme where it's the black, the the, the trans clear. And the trans orange, uh, that way it's really striking. Um, and so I'm I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It was a lot of fun to make, even though I spent so much time on it. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, cool. yeah. So so this is probably like Masep's round three mock night diamond is probably the most well received mock in the entire tournament, and it 
there are a lot of things that I really love about this mock. Uh, one of the few details that caught me immediately when I saw the mock is that if you look closely on the uh, on the mock, the bike the biker seat actually uses a Star Wars chess piece for its seat, and I thought that was like a really really nice part usage for for using that pieces that otherwise people you know they don't tend to use it for. Because when you see like Star the the bigger Star Wars chess pieces, they're much bigger than your standard Hero Factory mm -hmm. chess piece. So they're usually used for titan sized builds for their thighs or for their arms or just armor in general. So to see it used in a much different, more different way here was a like a really nice fresh uh, breath of fresh air. And another thing that uh, that I really loved was the very small details in this mock. Specifically, the one where he has these chi slopes in trans in trans trans clear, lined up on the ground, leaving kind of like a trail from where the where the sword is pointing on the ground. So that kind of get strikes me as two things: is whether like where the sword is kind of like breaking apart as it's touching the ground, but it also kind of reminds me of how like if you push uh, if you push uh, a piece of metal or steel against the against like any like hard surface, it'll generate like sparks mm. uh, a trail of sparks and i thought that wow that is such a like nice and clever detail that i feel that that i really really love that's cool yeah so it's, it's always those little things isn't that's cool um mm. so we've been talking a lot about because it, it's funny you guys intended to use one nice part use in this and you've made many nice part usages which is really cool um i had a point to get to but uh, Ezreal, uh, no, no, you need to talk about your mock. So, mm -hmm. what uh, you know, I assume yours was the dragon heads, yeah, for for minions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. So, so mine, mine was definitely a huge risk because mm -hmm. unlike the um, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unlike with uh, the round two mock, where okay, plague max, they're 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 uh, not original concept, but you know, depending on what you build it around, could be considered original. This was not original at all. This was a mob of somebody's existing self mock. Uh, and which was originally not my plan. So I I want to highlight a really uh, key aspect that builders should have for this is that you should be able to be flexible and versatile when it comes to like these kind of like, you know, building around a specific things like that. Because mm -hmm. I remember I had to bounce through like three different ideas before I settled on doing a, a mob of minion. So I originally was thinking of doing... Um, an Eldritch version of Vampra because for the Bio Cup I did like an Eldritch Antros, then I made an Eldritch Krika sometime last year. So I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna make another installment into the Eldritch Makuta series, and I'm gonna make the the highlight uh, centerpiece technique be the uh, the dinosaur tails in red, kind of erupting from the from the nooks and crannies of the mock. And I tried um, because the part that kind of stumped me the most was how could I recreate Vampra's head. Because I don't have any of the Makuda's original masks except from like Krika that I got from my uh, inheriting my friend's old collection, but yeah, that was the part that kind of gave me the most trouble. And at some point, I kind of just gave up. So I looked for another piece that I wanted to try and use for my centerpiece, and I experimented a bit with Strax ice armor pieces for a bit. I thought I could I have four of these. Maybe I could make like some sort of spine for a for a snake or a dragon of some kind. Um, that didn't work out either. So. Eventually, I kind of just settled on the Ninjago Ultimate Dragon Heads. And I originally was going to... I'm not sure if you know this, Ben, uh, if you're familiar with Digimon, but there was mm. a... there's a di But there's a character called Omnimon, which had like... A, which is a combination of like two, two, two characters, and it has like arms that are of the the character's heads. Like, it's like a, like a dragon and a wolf kind of character. And each of the heads has like a weapon inside of them. That's what I originally wanted to do. Yeah, cool. But I... I severely underestimated how big those dragon heads were <laughs> when I got them in hand. And so like, man, this is way too big for the for the hands. And because I, I ordered like six of them because I wanted to use them for the shoulders, the arms and the legs. Yeah. But because they were so big, I had to like, crap, this is not going to work. So eventually, the more and more I kept tinkering around with it, the more I realized, you know, this is starting to slowly look like minion. I'm just going to make minion. Nice. Um, and, and at that point, I kind of realized like, okay, I have to kind of not kind of forego the concept and completely rely on my whole my my building skills in order to kind of carry me to this round and to some degree it did work uh i will i, I will note that one of the, the judges mentioned that you have won but i by only one point i'm like oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, dodged, the, dodged the bullet there yeah, but yeah it, it it was super risky i will not lie but yeah you know 
Again, you want to know more about the mock? There's a BIS episode you can check out. Just go back up to the channel and watch it. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. This is good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good. You got to risk it for the biscuit, you know? So it's, um, mm. it's good that you did that. I like that. Um, what I was going to say before, but then realized I had to, had to, had to get you to talk about your stuff. Um, you both were talking about all these different parts that you were playing around with and trying to use until you reached the, the piece that you wanted. Um, what sort of like pieces do you typically like to play around with or use, um, that like work well for specific techniques or are there pieces you tend to gravitate more towards with your mocks in general? Um, yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, uh, Back when, so a, a, a technique that I found myself using way too much was this sort of um, crotch design that I kind of took off from JFA, where it was like these two arch pieces that kind of make up a sort sort of crotch guard area. I mm -hmm. found I, I originally did that for the for one of the plague mechs, I, the first plague mech I did, and then slowly over time I ended up realizing I'm using this design way too much. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, another piece that I also realized. Use, I used a lot was the um the Star Wars like shoulder pad armors because God I love that piece but then I realized in the entire mock league I used I used this design for literally every mock I made <laughs> yeah, I'm getting I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of it but it looks so good yeah yeah but yeah but then, other than that I guess you know the standard piece I like to use like all other like um builders is using um Exo Force um robot hands for like fingers and you know for adding like a bunch of like the more human like humanoid like details and stuff like that yeah. and i also uh have come to really like designing making uh for legs uh leg wise uh like a system a completely system built thigh but then at the lower legs that it's connected to are completely technic based cool yeah what about what about you miss what 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 kind of techniques or pieces do you enjoy using uh so I don't know, if you look, I guess if you look closer on a lot of these, the ones I made for this and just a lot of my more recent stuff, I kind of use the same hip design and thigh design for, like, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, at least in this one, I got, I'm looking at my the mocks that I have on hand for Mock League, and one, two, three, f four, four of the five use the same thigh design, and one of them used it twice. Um... Yeah. So, so that's a Technic I use, and it's like basically just a replacement for a CCBS limb where you use um, Technic connectors and uh, socket, uh, bionicle sockets instead of the limb, just to add a little bit more bulk to the back end of it. Uh, hmm? No, no, I, I was just trying to look at the mocks and see which ones you're referring to. Uh, I, I'm assuming it was um, your round two, three, and five mock you were referring to? Uh, two, three, four, and five oh. use the same. The only difference is how the knee's connected on um uh the the four the four one and the round five knee is pretty similar for the white robot and ignizotl and then on the round four the thighs on the human are the same as the ones i used on uh crimson horror specs on round two so uh yeah i use that one a whole lot with some <laughs> minor changes uh just because i think it works well for like a uh, more organic looking thigh while also having lots of like Posability. Uh, the the for the hips normally I end up building those out of system and then connecting them to the body using uh, the ratchet connectors. So like those little round ones that are like the they have like the clip joint but they're not the the big ball joint. You know like the they used to be system only and now they have technic versions of them. You guys yeah 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 know yeah, what I'm talking about yeah 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 okay cool what, cool okay. um I use <laughs> yeah. those a whole lot just because I think like. Uh, making the hips that way allows me to like add lots of like different t touches to them, like different armor techniques or different designs on them. And then connecting to the body allows some posability in the spine, which is always good. Uh, so that I use that technique a lot. I think I need to maybe branch out a little bit, uh, but it's, it's such a solid starting point. And I like find myself starting there all the time just cause like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to build some hips and we just work both directions out from there. And then we'll be, then we'll have a mock. That's basically how it goes. But like for parts, I end up using the system like curved slopes, the small ones, yeah. uh, on so much stuff because they're such a such a useful part. They're they're good for adding like details and like small like little just curves and stuff like that. They're they're so useful. Uh, I find myself using them a lot. I've also come around to the uh, boat studs on everything for joints, um, though that technique's been around for ages. 
and uh yeah so lots of that i i do find that i i kind of like fall into a very similar aesthetic for a lot of the bills i make um so maybe we'll branch out from that in the future but yeah those are like the big ones is those hips and curved slopes oh that's awesome yeah that yeah that's right kids you hear that system ain't your enemy it's your best friend <laughs> system is the, the superior building system and i will die on that hill oh <laughs> and by that i mean you can integrate as long as you integrate with everything everything works Maset, Mas Maset believes in sccbs supremacy <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's, that's, that's cool like I, i'm excited to see what they do with that um yeah and i, I yeah it's and like a, well, i think that go it, it's a, yeah no, no i was just gonna say I, I believe there was a specific question regarding that so we'll we'll get more into that later at the end oh yeah yeah, yeah I'll, 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 I'll be calling cool. Good point. Um, well, on that, <laughs> is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about with this round? Because we, we got we to gotta move on to those oh, questions. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I yeah, got... Yeah. I, you want to go, go ahead? ahead? Yeah, 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 no, yeah, you go. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I just wanted to highlight, uh, it was at this point, um, round three onwards, that I noticed that, and this is something Masep actually disclosed to me, is that um, he realized after seeing both my mine and um, Ryan's, uh, mock in round two that he realized, you know, having one mock is cool, but oh, having yeah. a mock with something else is even better. Yeah. And he <laughs> definitely, he definitely like really capitalized on that concept of, uh, you know, having two mocks, have, having a mock in something else definitely adds so much more dynamic to the build. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see that with the, with the next two mocks as well. Yeah. I, I saw, I was just looking at like what the judges liked and which ones were their favorites. And I noticed with his in round two, I was like, his is a, a dude that attaches to like a spider mech. Okay, that's two mocks. That's cool. Uh, so and I was like, let's just let's just throw in an extra thing, add some extra scenery, or add just some extra things on there, just to like really complete the picture. Um, the other thing I wanted to highlight though is like this round I, has has some of my favorite builds of the whole series, and like, uh, like Obliv and Ryan and Max, like they had some really really solid ones, and like Max's in particular, I think really like highlights the whole theme so so well and that like your eyes are drawn to the single red point and then you go to the the the, the hukey masks that are like the, the centerpiece for his and then like you just kind of look out further and further and you just got smaller yeah. little less intricate yeah. limbs and i think that one is such a good one it, it, and i'm i'm a little bummed he didn't get to move on because like i was really looking forward to being able to compete against him because he, the guy is a solid builder and like ryan's and Oblivs are just both really cool too so like this this right had some good stuff if you haven't looked yeah. at them Go look it up. They're good. You won't regret it. The hashtag is MockLeak21 on Instagram for those of you who are curious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ezreal with the plugs again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I... yeah. But, yeah, sorry. I, I just wanted to highlight that the uh, about the Masep going on about uh, Max's build was the fact that um, Max's was actually the first mock, I believe, that was posted to yeah. the to the round three like chat. So he was the first to submit. And that kind of set like the 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 expectations for what uh the you know peter and the rest of the judges were expecting from this round and be like oh that's so good mm -hmm. that's cool it was, it was solid yeah it was really solid fantastic right. well yeah beautiful um so uh, just a quick note just on what you were saying there i don't know how much i'm going to be showing all the different mocks throughout this because it is a podcast i'm keeping the visuals a bit yeah. more minimal but um yeah like you said check that hashtag on uh, instagram but also i might see if i can put like a google drive link or something in the group description so take a look at that if you can as well um but would you like to introduce uh, the trial number four good sir all right so trial number four uh easily one of my favorite trials not my favorite but easily one of um is is by dan v and his trial is called building with harmony so his his trial concept was that you had to make a mock that was based off a song. And, you know, it, this to me came as no surprise because uh, we, we know Dan and we know Dan is like a huge music lover. So it made sense why his trial was about music. And, you know, um, I'm pretty sure Masep had some uh, some 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 bio cup flashbacks because his um oh, his gosh. round yeah his round he participated in the bracket that was about music for for the first round. Very cool. Yeah, that was a that was a that was a fun time because that was when um, uh, Velocijactor and I we made the same song as uh, like the theme of our mock was the same song and we were pitted against each other and it was just like no not this again <laughs> this round ended up being really really good though yeah it was really good 
That's fantastic. Well, actually, yeah. let's talk about that then. So, like, just because before we were talking about the differences between, like, BioCup and, and um, sort of more sort of smaller scale contests in that regard. So how was it doing essentially the same thing again, but in a, a different contest than um, Masep? Uh, I thought this one was, like, they had some slight differences to the theme. Uh, like, like Isabel said for me, it was, it was uh, I had some, some hard flashbacks where I was like, <laughs> oh, boy, this round is going to be terrible because I remember how much trouble it was last year. Um, but... Uh, that the, some of the restrictions on this one they had were that you the the the, the mock had to be based on the lyrics, the title, or like the the music itself. You couldn't be basing it off of album artwork or music videos mm -hmm. or like the artists or anything like that. It had to be based on the music itself. Uh, which the the bio cut version of this one was a little bit more open ended. It was just the theme was music. Do that whatever you wanted. Uh, so this one kind of made you, at least for me, made me like approach it a bit for, differently where I wasn't trying to be like, okay, I can make something about music. I was like, no, I got to make an interpretation of a song. Uh, yeah. So for me, uh, again, because I was short on time, I was like, I got to think of something really fast that is that's not going to be something that someone else does the same song for because we're not <laughs> repeating that again. Um, so I was just like, what do I listen to all the time? And last year, uh, Bastille was my top listened to band on Spotify, according to the, the rap thing they do. Mm. And I was just like, uh, maybe there's a song of theirs I can do. And one of the songs they have is basically, I, I think it's supposed to be like, uh, about like virtual reality or like, um, living, living your life in a fantasy kind of thing. And like mm. the music video for itself does like really play into that. Uh, but the lyrics are really going into like the sort of video gaming aspects of that virtual reality can be like pursue. So I was just like, okay, well, I, I can do something with that. It's not the most like deep or like innovative or original idea, but we don't have much time, so we'll just pick this and we'll just run with it and hope we get something good. So that's what I was going with mine. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, what about you, Ezreal? <laughs> yeah, so just really quickly, I also wanted to point out because Maset brought up like uh, there were some restrictions or like specific details about the building. Was Another thing that um, Dan highlighted in his like, sort of description for this round was the fact that we actually couldn't use songs that came from the Bionicle uh, franchise. <laughs> so nothing from, from oh, Cryo yeah. Shell or, or, or like uh, All American, All American Rejects. Rejects. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, that, and, and to some degree, he was also like really critical about don't use meme songs for this round. <laughs> 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 okay. they're, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And because because I remember like because um, because he wants to because he's you know he's really passionate about music so he doesn't want to see you know this whole round which is dedicated to music be you know I guess tarnished with with so meme songs yeah take that exactly. as you will yeah because I I remember me and one of the other contestants uh, Rick Bionicles uh he we we made a joke about like let's make a song let's make a Rick Astley mock based on <laughs> oh, that we're gonna yeah. Give you <laughs> yeah yeah but of course we didn't do that so. Kind of like Misep, I I was kind of looking back through what are the most what what band did I recently pick up that I really really enjoyed their music and I've I I was actually considering a bunch of different bands beforehand like I'm a I really love um, Linkin Park mm -hmm. I really like I like Skillet Thousand Foot Crutch and some <laughs> other like a uh, rock metal bands cool, uh, yeah. I was thinking uh, I was also thinking about um uh, what were they called One OK Rock which is a a J rock band in, from Japan beautiful uh, but the most recent band that I picked up was a band called Starset, uh -huh. and there's the song I picked for this round was called My Demons. Cool. Uh, and so basically, what Im immediately came to me was that I was listening to the lyrics, and you know, some for making a mock that is based on a song, it could be done in other in many different ways. You could do it based on literal interpretations of lyrics. Maybe you're looking into like the the more deeper meanings of the song, or you know, you you could go either really direct or abstract with it. So there was a there was a line in the song that really caught my attention, which was uh, "We are one and the same." Oh, yeah. And I immediately the the first thing I des I designed in my mind was the the weapon that uh, my mock Arcosios used, which is a which is a giant staff with one end being a scythe and one end being a ring staff to kind of reflect the, the 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 good and evil side. And then off of that, I was like, you know, the song is called "My Demons," and there are some hints of like you know angels being represented in the lyrics so i was like i'll make a mock that is a half demon half angel and that concept is not unique at all like there are plenty of like a uh, half demon half angel character concepts out there mm -hmm. but the how how i wanted to uh, approach this was that i didn't want it to be like a exact half and half i wanted 
one side to be more dominant, while the other side is kind of like creeping over and kind of corrupting, taking control of uh, the other side. And of course, the most appropriate would be like the okay, the angel side is the more dominant one, and the and the demon side is kind of creeping and clawing over to try to kick, take control of the body. So, cool. um, one of my technique that I really wanted to build around was the. Uh, on the mock itself it has like this design on the chest where these claws are kind of like corrupting and clawing over the chest and i was like ah oh, that's that's a really cool design and i want to i wanted to focus on that and that gave me so much trouble because i was struggling for the tor the uh on the torso design for a long time and just just to keep in mind that this because this trial was being held over the the christmas season and the holidays we actually got an extra week to work on the on our mocks for round four oh, so nice. i devoted i voted two i devoted like two two weeks and a little bit of the third week into making that torso alone and it stressed me out to no end <laughs> but i'm I'm really happy with how it turned out Beautiful. it definitely could have been done better but i'm relatively happy with how it turned out i think it looks cool so i think you should you should be proud of the time you invested into that good sir yeah yeah. Um, on the subject of like music inspiring mocks in that sense, do you guys often listen to music or let music inspire what it is that you build? Uh, I mean, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, you go ahead. I spent too long talking. <laughs> uh, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm normally listening to something when I'm building. I don't, I mean, this is, this is something we're trying to work on this year. Uh, I don't do a lot of things in silence and I'm trying to trying to be better about that by putting the phone down. But like normally when I'm building, I'm if I'm putting in long sessions, I'm I'm probably turning on music or I'm listening to a podcast or something like that. Um, music doesn't normally like really tie into what I build all that much. If we're being honest, uh, I guess like the main way it does for me is the opposite end, where I think of like the feelings that an image will invoke in terms of music sometimes. So like I'll imagine if you were to see this, like what would the soundtrack go with it, which kind of like informs my like approach to trying to like figure out what kind of feeling feelings i want people to feel when they look at something so yeah um i i don't normally draw inspiration from music all that much maybe occasionally obviously there have been two contests where i've done that in but um sure. other than that not not super frequently for me but i do listen to it yeah nice and you ezra yeah sometimes yeah i i think for this specific case for this trial uh listening to the song over and over really helped me like better visualize what i wanted to do for this trial and um, I think re choosing a song you really resonate with or like really enjoy listening on repeat can also help with like you know just make the appropriate setting or atmosphere for to get you in a building mood. Of course, the song it depends on the song really. Uh, it's kind of I, I guess for comparison's sake, it's kind of similar to when people who are studying they listen to like lo-fi music. Yeah. Uh, because it because it helps them to relax and it helps them to focus better. Mm. And I'm 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 just wondering uh your guys's opinion do you think like there's a difference between like when if you are a builder who likes to listen to software you're building uh is there a difference between listening to like just music versus songs so ones with and without lyrics oh for me well well I, yeah, this is a two-part answer um for me like when i'm doing work like work work not lego related I often listen to yeah either lo-fi music or more recently I've been listening to Persona Five music, um, oh, which Persona is, Five is so good. It's so good, um, and it 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 really helps me. Like there's times where I'm like, because um, I often struggle to I don't struggle to read like I'm good at reading and stuff, but like when I have to read stuff for work that maybe isn't like amazingly interesting. Sometimes my brain is just like, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to make this as difficult as possible for you. And I'm like, ah. mm -hmm. so I often find if I play that kind of like lo-fi or persona music or whatever, my brain is then like, yeah, all right, fine. I'll, I'll work properly. And so it's almost like tricking my brain into thinking like here, you're, you're not actually working. You're like listening to music or doing something like completely unrelated. And so it relaxes me and I can get into it. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas when I'm building I just kind of like having something on in the background. It doesn't necessarily, I don't know. I would argue it does aid my work. Like I used to listen to um, like Critical Role and stuff while I was building like a castle mock for a really long period of time. And I think that did actually impact the, what I was building specifically. Um, so sometimes I think it helps, but for me specifically, I don't know. I don't think it always does. I think it, it can put me in a different state physically or emotionally but I don't think it actually affects the build inherently, but I don't know what it's like for you, Maseb. 
Can you repeat the question again? I got lost in the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. So it's basically like, do you, like for people who like listen to to music when they're oh, building. Do you do you think right. there's a difference between like you know listening to songs with or without lyrics? Uh, I mean, at least for me, it depends on the level of concentration I need. So generally, for building, I don't need to like concentrate too too hard on like one specific particular thing because it's just kind of figuring out how things go together um if i need to focus though generally i'll switch off of something that has lyrics and on a something that's like just a, generally a soundtrack or it's like got lyrics that mm. i do not understand because i don't speak the language or it's not mm. a real language so um mm. like uh in those kind of points i listen to a lot of soundtracks so whether that's from like uh some movies uh, like I think the the commuter has a solid soundtrack. That's a movie that I don't think a lot of people saw, but it's got a pretty solid soundtrack. Um, it's, it's like games, like near that 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 soundtrack's good, or like shows or something like that. I'll listen to just to because I, I don't need that way. I'm not focusing on what's being said in the song, but if it's something that doesn't require as much attention, I, I'll just turn on whatever. Mm. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Um... Is there anything else that you guys wanted to talk about specifically with this round? Because uh, if not, you can always move over to the next one. But uh, don't want to rob you of anything else you want to say. Yeah. No, I was kind of I was kind of interested in the the other two questions you actually put down for the uh, for for this trial specifically. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, well then, yeah. then let's answer. Well, I'll ask one of those, and then we'll move over to the next yeah. one. Then. So, right. yeah. um, what sort of other stimuli do you guys like to sort of use for for building? Because I know, I believe Jafe has said before that he really likes to listen to music. Either that's when he's building or to help inspire him specifically. So, like, is there sort of other kind of creative stimuli, whether it's music or something else, that actually really grabs you guys when you're building? By listening to the Bionicle Inspiration <laughs> series. Oh, <laughs> the long plug. Listen to that. <laughs> I'm just, I, <laughs> Lead yeah. it in everything. <laughs> but, yeah. It, it, you're you know, going to be Ben's favorite by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But 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 in all seriousness, it's definitely, it's definitely good. I usually... I mentioned that I listen to music when I build, but that's actually, that's only in very rare instances. But most of the time, I'm usually putting on one of your podcasts or episodes, usually the most recent episode because I hadn't watched it yet. And I kind of just, you know, just build and listen. And so, uh, sometimes it may or may not be uh, listening more than building, but, you know. Um, I, I I think a lot of the time, people like kind of just get ideas randomly. And, you know, they, they'll just like r note it down in their mind or like somewhere else. And they kind of just... Uh, just, just eventually they'll get to build it. Uh, just teetering a bit on the other question you actually put in. Uh, I think a potentially good source of inspiration and ideas is actually talking to someone who's not into Lego because they could have ideas that us Lego builders probably wouldn't possibly think of because they're not bound to the concept of, you know, using specific pieces or techniques to design a specific idea. They kind of yeah. just suggest and they assume like, oh, you could probably find a way to build that. And it's just because like, yeah, because yeah, we're, we're restricted to the pieces that we have that you know that are official and stuff like that so we 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 don't see everything as black and white as they they might see it it's a great point I think yeah it's also good to think about because I, I was actually talking to my sister about this last night um that uh a lot of times at least with like say if you're really into bionicle bionicle has like a generally a pretty specific aesthetic that may not be the easiest for someone who's not like really into it to to read uh or understand um and I think that like trying to look from that perspective can be helpful in making your builds like cleaner because uh, uh, I think, someone I from think, the outside perspective just I, doesn't carry all the expectations we have. So yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna we're in the home stretch. So the fifth <laughs> trial is by Care Creations, and it is called Gortacular. So for this trial, you had to make a mock that was organic in design. So that that that's kind of a of a loose term but basically what he was trying to what he what he wanted from this round was to make a mock look as gory disgusting and grotesque as possible nice so how was this experience for both of you guys had you had you go with making grotesque stuff was it a bit of a different experience for you guys that's yes. probably gonna go first on this one yeah so I, i'm just gonna come out uh start off by saying this round was my favorite out of the entire tournament nice. because every round prior to the final one i kind of just been panicking and stressing about every <laughs> mock i was gonna make but for this trial it, literally one one day miss up just hit me up on discord be like hey you want to post your mocks at the same time i was like oh Ooh. shoot yeah i was like 
I, I was not expecting this, but I'm, I'm totally down for it. Um, yeah, and what makes this round in particular my favorite of the entire league was the way both me and Masep kind of perceived the trials theme in our mocks. So for, for lack of a better comparison, uh, the way I see how Masep envisioned his idea of the, the organic and fleshy theme is, for those of you who watched Attack on Titan, it's kind of similar to the, to the Colossal Titan, where his aesthetic was like, his skin, his uh, the the skin underneath is exposed, so you can see a bunch of the the tissue and the muscles and the flesh. Um, and while mine was more in line with the 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 Rod Rice's Titan, where a lot of the gore and fleshy aspects are secluded to the the stomach mouth, where the organs and the entrails are kind of just falling out, kind of there for the whole world to see. And it kind of goes to show you how differently two people can perceive a theme and go about it completely different ways, but end up with mocks that are both equally like qualified to win in in both me and myself's case mm -hmm. yeah very cool do do appreciate the cheeky attack on titan reference um <laughs> <laughs> how was it for you then um uh Misep? uh i mean I, someone did, I think this is the one i had the most fun during because like going into round four i was i was pretty burnt out and i was tired from everything going on but like coming to round five I was like all right well we're at the end so we'll just have some fun and see what happens. Uh, but for me, like, I'll be honest, I don't think I fully understand stood the theme until after the contest had finished. Uh -huh. So, um, we, I was kind of like, he says organic, so I, mm, there's gore in the name, but like the description doesn't really talk much about gore other than just like making something that's like flashy or creepy. And like, I don't normally dabble in, let's call it the horror genre for building all that much. So, I, my, my approach i was like i want to make something that's unsettling and like has the organic vibes like your like your organs and like your muscle and blood vessels and all that without being just like in your face just gore everywhere because it's just mm. not something i'm like super keen on uh doing myself i think it's really cool when people do it and I, I think it can be done very well it's just not something i'm super keen on uh for for my own thing so i was like trying to take a more subtle approach to it where it's like it's got like that aspects those aspects too but it's more contained um and I think like Ezreal's his was like very in your face on just like it's kind of just this horrifying creature with just like just two disembodied heads with like spines and blood and like all these like fleshy bits coming out of the stomach and it's just like it's 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 creepy because it's just like all in your face and I was trying to be like okay let's do creepy but it's not so much about what's there it's more about what's what the things that are there imply so I, that's the kind of, I, I thought it was kind of neat to see the two approaches there. But I had a lot of fun with it, especially the whole, like, let's do our things at the same time. I had some, one, I thought that'd be fun, and two, I thought I had some slightly selfish motivation, and then I was like, if we post it at the same time, that means the judges had the same time to look at them both and evaluate mm -hmm. them both, and there's no, like, recency bias for either of them. And also, that means that Ezreal and I have the exact same amount of time we're on the contest, so we're, like, on a completely level playing field. And it's just fun to do. So I thought it was a it, like for a strategic way, that was part of why I did it. And also I just thought it'd be a fun just like thing to do to make things more enjoyable for the final. And like let's 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 finish this together. We're not competing. We're we're just doing this at our, 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 our together at the same time and whoever wins wins. Yeah. That's smart. I like that thinking. Um yeah. with you were saying before how you were like organic, but like also horror and like that confusion there. Because it's funny, I hear organic and I go like, yeah, like a really like nice, smooth aesthetic, very like uh, mm -hmm. like a space suit yeah. or sci-fi almost. But then like the horror thing is almost sort of the kind of contrast of that. So like mm -hmm. when you heard organic, like, yeah, what did that mean to you? Did pieces like come to mind when you heard that? Like, yeah, what, what, what sort of went through your heads, I guess? Yeah. So I think had you not looked at like the title, mm -hmm. um, Wing Gortacular, and it would literally just said make an organic mock. I think the first thing that pops into my mind is like, okay, uh, I think what he's trying to get from this is the, to make something that looks relatively human looking, not humanoid, but human. Mm -hmm. So uh, flesh colored skin, appropriate body ratios and stuff like that. But, you know, if you read the trial and, and to some case the description, you can tell that Kerr was looking for something that was very monstrous, very eldritch and disgusting in design. Something yeah. that you'd see, like, out of, like, Resident Evil or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And how was it for you, Misep? Um, I mean, I, I already mentioned I, I uh, didn't, I don't think I really grasped the thing, but it seemed like my take on what he was looking for was, it seemed like he really wanted, the, like, flesh or, like, organs or just, like, things that resembled like parts of anatomy so whether that's human whether that's not human 
um, some things that came to mind when I was like trying to figure out how to to, to approach this was uh, like Alex Mox did one a few a few months ago. That's I can't remember the name of it, uh, but I, I, the, I believe it's the cursed. Yes, that one. It's no, the it's big the... skeleton dude with the the with the, the book. book, and like yeah. it has just it's like got this pretty like decently accurate like anatomy just sitting in its rib cage and it's i i saw that and i was like okay that's that's like a that that was kind of like a starting point where i was like what do i want to do with mine i was like i like the skeleton thing where it's got like still the organs inside so maybe we'll like uh, we'll, we'll riff on that um but like some of the parts that come to mind for that are like the dino tails like the little claws mm. for for me i was using like hot dogs and red rubber bands and like mm. pink ball joints to just, like represent different like organs and like sections of the internal internal uh of the the creature so there's that i also like really I, in last year's lug bulk i got a ton of red minifigure whips so mm. i just threw those everywhere because i was like these can be kind of be like blood vessels or like little strands of flesh or linking things so we'll just just go crazy with these and put them everywhere so that that's what i did very cool yeah awesome yeah um uh, we're we're starting to run out of time a little bit here. So, are there any other sort of like last minute things you wanted to talk about with this? Uh, anything else you wanted to hit specifically here? No, I I, I think we've generally covered um, most of the the stuff we wanted to talk about. I guess we could like just give a really quick like conclusion about our our, our feelings about the mock league in general. Go ahead, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So why don't why don't you why don't you just kick it off, Masep? Okay. Uh, I mean, I had fun with it. I thought it was. Uh, I, I I think the way it was structured uh, was was pretty solid. On uh, the way things were handled in terms of like the the turnaround for things being submitted and then results coming out were good. Judges were good about providing feedback when asked. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm hoping they continue to improve on it in the future for people that haven't done it before. Uh, maybe keep an eye out for it next year. Um, there's definitely a few calls that are made that I, I don't agree with. And I, that's no secret to the judges cause I talked to them about it. So I don't feel bad about that saying that here. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I think it was, I think it's a, it's a, it's a well-structured thing and I, I hope it continues to improve in the future. Um, and I hope that other contests like this pop up cause I had, I had fun. I think these repeating like tourney style contests can definitely get a little tiring. Um, so if you do them, don't do a ton of them back to back. Just take take breaks because and like do your own thing from time to breathe. But like I think they're a good way to really accelerate your development as a builder in a very short amount of time. So like definitely take a look. Um, I hope that things continue to get better in the future too. So how about you? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I more or less reciprocate uh, Ms. F's, um feelings towards the tournament. I thought it was really fun. It was a breath of fresh air for the Bio Cup. Uh, because it was a more a little more down to earth as I mentioned earlier, and yeah, he's totally correct. Um, that you know, participating in tournaments of this, you know, like these, whether it's the Bio Cup or the Mock League, is definitely a good way to. If you're looking to improve as a builder, it's definitely one of the quickest ways to do so. Because being put under um, restrictions and time constraint can really get you to be really creative with your with your pieces as well as concepts, and get you to do things you'd never have done on your own. So I'm I really. I, just like myself, I want to see more of these uh, tournaments that are that are held by other people. And and I, I I put this down in my notes earlier, but I forgot to mention it is um not uh during the times of the mock league, another like sort of community tournament that was being held was the Gord Party, and that was like a really interesting uh small sort of community competition between a a few builders, like I think eight or seven builders, where they mm -hmm. kind of build under these really wacky themes that were things like uh um. Oh, what well, what's the term? Uh, yeah, sabotages and yeah, basically you you have to do some really unorthodox stuff to your build, whether it's like including a non Lego element, get somebody else to name name a p name your mock in description or uh, build build a specific using a really out there obscure piece in your mock in yeah. some really cool way and stuff. And it's, it's these kind of contests that are like really really cool to see, and I'm hoping that. We get more of that in the future. By the way, by the mm -hmm. time this podcast comes out, uh, will be Bio Cup and the second Mock League will probably be held within this year in the future. So, you know, if this inspires you to to participate in those, uh, I, I I can confidently say me and Masep have co have completed our goal with being <laughs> on this podcast. That's great, fantastic. Fair, uh, yeah, nothing else you wanted to say? All good. Yeah, no, I'm I, good. I, I Beautiful. Well, lovely to discuss contests with you guys. And um, yeah, like you said, hopefully uh, more Mock League stuff will happen soon. And um, 
it can yeah. all begin again. Um, yeah, you let's... can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. You, if you are participating this year, you can come and dethrone me or Masap this time. Oh, yeah, very cool. Uh, let's I'm start trying to dethrone everybody, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, Masap, Masap wants, wants a revenge match. I'll, <laughs> hopefully, I'll see you in BioCup, sir. Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll see, hopefully. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Let's dive into some of these uh, audience questions now. So we've got three of them here. Uh, the very first oh. one we've got is kind of... Kind of the same question from two different people. So the first one is by Cobalt Cyclone Marx, uh, and the other question is by Pilot Mark, and they both more or less ask, uh, what are your hopes for new uh, CCBS themes from LEGO, uh, and do you think there'd be any kind of like pre-existing LEGO theme that would be uh, sort of translated well into a sort of CCBS style? So um, what do you guys think about this one? Uh, I think a lot of people, after seeing the the new SCCBS system with things like the the Iron Man figure or Arashim Shadow or even the the 2022 Ninjago Max, they are re- they're kind of like holding out hope for the potential return of a a G3 for Bionicle. So I think that um you know I I'm a bit iffy about whether or not G3 should return. It would be cool to see, but I also don't want to see it you know completely f- well not completely but fail like G2 did. Mm. Um, but I have seen some like bootleg CCBS sets based on Ninjago. I think you guys might have seen something similar. It's basically like like a CCBS Star Wars build, but it's uh, made entirely with the uh, pieces to reciprocate the, the like the the ninjas like Lloyd and Kai and Jay and all the other ninjas. Mm. Uh, I've seen like some videos about those bootlegs. They look kind of cool. But I, I, at the same time, they look kind of really weird, even weirder than the the Star Wars CCBS sets, which on their own kind of kind of plopped as well. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. But I I think Lego, if they were to bring back CCBS in some degree, would probably be looking to their more you know popular existing IPs. So you know, with Ninjago being the current most popular one. Uh, mm-hmm. And I I just wanted to ask your guys' opinions. Uh, uh, for a potential, how do you, how would you feel about a potential Bionicle G two? This is a this is a topic that's been brought up several times. But do you think it would <laughs> succeed this time around, or do you think maybe it shouldn't come back? And if it were to come back, how do you feel about it being made completely with the new SCCBS theme as opposed to, you know, your typical construction? For me, I think uh, that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, I'll give you some time to think, good sir. Um, for me, I think that, um, like. I think I think SB, SCCBS is an exciting thing, and I think that can hopefully pave the way for it. Part of me wonders if it needs a little bit of time to breathe. Like I think that just like when Bionicle came out was just sort of a good sort of like generational time for people who were into action figures and into uh, everything that Bionicle had to offer. And I don't, I'm not a toy expert, I don't know, but I kind of get the sense that maybe now people aren't as jazzed about that. Um, so maybe just like, you know, even it could only even be like five years or maybe even less or, or more, I don't know, but I almost sort of feel maybe it needs a bit of time to like breathe or just for, I don't know, society to get back into more sort of like action figure focused toys in that regard. Um, but that being said, some of those Ninjago mechs and things sell well, so who knows? Um, but yeah, I kind of just think it needs a bit of time. Obviously I'm biased and I would like to see it, but I definitely want it to come back and it come back strong and it not sort of like dwindle out in that sense, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, do, so do you think if like, if we were to get a Bionicle G3, it would be better to be made out of this new system or should they, you know, bring back construction if they were to revive uh, Bionicle for a G3? I reckon, I reckon it'd be nice to see a system SCCBS sort of focused line, see where that goes and then maybe see if that can kind of springboard a more sort of construction focused, less system heavy version. Um, maybe kind of like using it to test the waters almost, I reckon. I reckon I, that's what I'd like to see, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, just to uh, pivot off the the point you made about how the people are, you know, not as welcoming to the, to the whole SCCBS system. I think it's kind of the way it's being handled, uh, you know, received by the community right now is not that different from when, Hero Factory came 2.0, like released yeah. with their initial mm. uh, CCBS line because people, they absolutely hated the idea of CCBS. Like, oh, this is not Bionicle. I'm not going to use this in my Bionicle mocks. But then over time, people started to experiment more with it and realized that they could have achieved, they could achieve sh- such uh, robust and sleek designs using uh, just CCBS or a yeah. combination of both systems. So I definitely think you're, you're correct in the fact that it needs time, but, you know, 
it needs time for both the Lego community to kind of accept it as well as the Lego company to broaden uh, and expand upon the idea. And, you know, there are people like me and Masep and a bunch of the other like uh, con- people in the community who already are building with system in their a lot of their Bionicle mocks to the mm-hmm. point where a lot of the mocks are primarily system as opposed to construction. So yeah, we, we are definitely welcoming it. And a lot of people are, but there are obviously people who are like to build solely with construction and to some degrees solely with G1 parts. So, you know, just give it some time and, you know, we'll probably, we'll see a potential new era of this stuff. Sorry, I went on for a tangent there. Masep, what are your <laughs> thoughts? Um, I mean, I think that SC, the SCCBS, that's, that is hard to say, uh, is, <laughs> is cool. I, I kind of like what they're doing because it reminds me of the original launch of Bionicle. And then it's like just pretty simple, small, like not super big figures that have like a decent amount of articulation, but not like a ton. Um, so I'm from like just a nostalgia sake. I think that's kind of neat. Um, I hope they get it, they develop it further because I think it's cool to get like this kind of figure style building that re- is like seamless with your normal building system. I think that'll probably help people have a better time, be able to make their mo- their own ideas uh, play out in a in an articulated way. As far as like a, a G three goes, I'll I'll be honest, I don't really think that needs to happen. Uh, if it did happen, I I don't really expected it go as planned because like a a bionicle is like it is a product of its time um and yeah like i think one of you was i think as ben was saying that like people aren't quite into action figures as they used to be uh but also like they've done this twice already and like i i think g2 is pretty cool it's the 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 sets i think are pretty neat they've they've got issues obviously and obviously the way it was marketed is, is problematic but um I, I would be more interested in seeing something new that if they're going to be doing a construction or similar line, I think it'd be cool to do something new. Uh, and I, how they approach that, I'm not sure. I think that what they're doing right now where they're using it for mechs works well for keeping everything tied together in one building system because then your minifigures work with it. Mm. Um, in the future, I think it would be cool to maybe explore more like cartoony styles of building if you're going to be doing like characters, like maybe go with like human characters but that like make a more cartoony and art style instead of those like kind of halfway between star wars figure faces that are just kind of unsettling that's a good idea um i'm not entirely sure how that would play out i do think it'd be cool if something like exoforce was in cc scdb eh, s c c b s <laughs> because <laughs> then exoforce has like really strong like like character presence in the mm-hmm. characters with the pilots and every single mech has its uh, like its own like identity, and like some are bigger and bulkier, some are like are, are more streamlined. Uh, I think it'd be cool to like see something of that nature done again, um, or like something like Life on Mars, where you've got these uh, interesting modular mechs that can like separate and combine into to different combinations. Um, I think that's something like that would be cool. But like as far as Bionicle goes, I don't really think we need to see another one of that. But I do hope that uh, something that is good for people that are into like character design building. Uh, I hope something like that does persist in the future. Yeah. Well said, good sir. I yeah. definitely second everything you just said there. Yeah. But, you know, when, when Masep had a uh, trouble, um, pronouncing the SCCBS system, like I kind of, kind of put the initials together and realized it kind of, kind of, kind of spells out succubus. <laughs> oh, I just thought scabs, but okay, <laughs> we can go with succubus. <laughs> anyway, that, not important. Not important. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, the, not important. <laughs> the next question is from Golden Arpeggio, and they ask: Seeing that you all watch anime, how do you think that that influences your work? So, fellow weebs, <laughs> how does anime? I don't know. I've been called out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, first of all, hi, Marie. um okay so anime for me i think influences my builds to a certain degree i know for a lot of people they like to build mocks that are heavily inspired by characters from anime i think um with things like uh my friend jacks or bonkles mocks and max howell they they made mocks for bio cup and mock league that were based off the anime or the manga berserk so Mm -hmm. like like they made an actual character from the series and i see that a lot of people like from you know i've seen uh people on twitter they've made uh mocks of things uh metabots or from like digimon or pokemon like uh, with mike neves so i think it definitely influences 
a lot of people in different varying degrees. For me, I kind of, instead of build a character from the series, I take either like concepts or designs and implement them into my own characters, whether that's like, uh, you know, they have like this s particular silhouette that looks really, that would look really cool for a mock, or maybe they have this really cool weapon or gadget concept that, you know, you could give to a character and it would make sense. And, you know, that one starting line, that whole concept could be the spark of inspiration for uh, just the entire mock itself. So, you know, um, it, 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 I think it definitely uh, just it, it affects people in varying degrees. Uh, I think for me, it's kind of I kind of work the opposite end. Obviously, there is still like it, it is a source of inspiration, just like any piece of media or any, really anything I see there. Like all elements of those will come into play in what I build in some way. Sometimes it's like, oh, I like this idea. Maybe I can tweak that for my own. I remember a couple of years ago that was a little bit more pronounced. Um, but like now, I kind of think of the opposite end, where it's like, okay, if I if what the, like a character design I'm making or something was in motion, how would it look, and how does that like inform what I want to be in the design? So like, one I'm looking at right now uh, was a, a character I made uh, back in 2020, I think, uh, using one of uh, I think I'm going to mispronounce those Arrow Conan's heads, the, the Arrow heads. You, <laughs> you know his heads. stuff. You know his stuff. If you've seen Lego human builds, he's the one that does all the good ones or <laughs> a lot of the good ones. Yep. Um, but uh, I did one and the kind of the way I was approaching it was like, okay, if there was a story about this character, what aspects of the character design would make sense to be in that story? Um, so kind of like trying to design your own protagonist for a completely original story, that kind of thing. Um, so that kind of like plays into the opposite in me, where it's like if this was animated or like on the screen or like in motion, how would I look and how should I frame the photos I take to like kind of mimic what I have in my mind for that? So that's kind of what I think. Like, what do the things look like in motion, even though I'm building something that's going to be sitting on a shelf static? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cool. For me, I think... Um... I just, I just want to build the armored Titan as, uh, as a mock. That's just what, that's the biggest yeah. inspiration for, what, for me. Was, what, wasn't there a somebody posted a mock recently of a yeah. mock uh, of the Aaron and Reiner's Titan on uh, yeah. on Instagram, I believe. That yeah. was a and it was a purely system based mock. I think. Yeah, they were gorgeous. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Chonky. seeing that alone, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Chunky. Yeah, they were like they were good. They were, I just I just like the, the like the proportions. They were like kind of like shrunk down a little bit, so like little little stubby dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're huge, but like you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Cute little yeah, yeah. genocidal maniacs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was good. Yeah. Um, I know. I don't know. I I apologize. I don't know who built those, but I do remember seeing yeah, those on no Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know who you are. Yeah, we like what you did. Um, the other an like influencer anime will, will will give me um for like my system stuff um very often like landscapes or like settings or the world itself will inspire that mm -hmm. for me um but I think that also kind of bleeds over to characters and with Bionicle stuff too where it's like this character has like a really specific like attack or way that they fight that can kind of influence the mock whether that's like how you design the weapons or like how you um even just kind of how you build the whole thing in general because you're like I'm, I'm imagining how they move how they talk how they interact in, in the world or whatever um and i think anime is so like i mean all storytelling is really focused on characters to a degree but like i don't know anime's anime is so like over the top as well which i think is also really helpful for like character design because it can mm -hmm. it, it, we were talking about this in the break before how we were saying like mocking is such like a visual medium so like really heavily emphasizing certain elements can actually sometimes just make your intentions really clear and it doesn't come across as over the top, which um, if you if you watch a lot of anime, you know, all the yelling and big intense things, it doesn't feel as over the top because you're kind of used to it. That's just the medium, you know? So I feel like elements of that with anime really feed into my work where it's like, oh, I want to really focus on all the sort of design elements and really bring them out a bit more so that everything I'm trying to communicate is really clear, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah um that's 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 everything i got to say and <laughs> hopefully you can <laughs> expect a, a some sort of titan related mock soon i don't know i need to, i need to think about that but watching more is, 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 oh. has got me hungry to do that yeah 
I I had a like an idea for like a system diorama. Uh, you know, uh, I I don't know if I should put a spoiler warning, but spoilers anyways. Um, it was uh, of the scene, uh, when um Aaron actually was transforming into the founding titan. Mm. There was like this one still image where Gobby was looking at like him and his kind of like spine the hallucinogenia like rib cage spine was kind of like ripping out and his head was like backwards and you could see like all the the, the wall titans in the background i thought that would make like an awesome like system diorama yeah. not the full founding titan itself but like the midway process where like like as he was transforming yeah yeah actually that would oh ooh, giving me ideas i'm for task mm, let's get at <laughs> Let we need to get Andrew Steele to make the Founding Titan. <laughs> Actually, mate, oh yeah, hey, <laughs> if you're listening, good sir, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the final mock we have. Final mock. The final. <laughs> this is a bis episode now. Uh, the final question we have is by Trick Mocks, but that's Trick with a one. Uh, and he says, "How do you know when a design is good? So when you're building your mocks, when you're making a thing." When do you sit there and you go like, this, this is, this is, I've made a good thing. I've done a good job. How does that work for you guys? Just, 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 just a side note. The trick was that the, you thought the one was an I, but it's actually a one. Well, I fell for that <laughs> trick. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I think generally a lot of people when, well, when, how they think the design is good is that, um, when you feel like you can't improve the design any further than you already have. That is generally, well, not to say that it's good, but it's as at a point where you're satisfied with it. And I think uh, it's for all of us as builders, it's inevitable for us to look at a mock we've made and constantly think it could be done better, um, even if it's as the best we can do it with our current ability. So sometimes you need to accept that, okay, this, this mock right now, this is as good as I can make it with my current abilities for now. But when my skills have improved, I'll revisit this mock and improve it. And so, and just another note uh, for when figuring out whether the design is good. Sometimes, like I mentioned before, less is more. And in this context, it's about realizing when you need to stop trying to fix and improve it because you know maybe it's good as it is. And you know if you if you continue to like add on and more and more to it, maybe it, it starts looking a bit cluttered or you know it, it the design maybe looks even worse than when you originally like uh, wanted to continue improving upon it. So. I, I think it's about just knowing when to to stop like at a design that you think will work, even if it may not be at the best it can be. Um, it may be the best that you can work with right now. Yeah, nice. I, I would I would agree. Um, thinking about mock league in particular, uh, I think four out of the five ones that I made entries that I made, uh, all of those, I had something more planned for the concept I ended up cutting. Uh, and it's kind of like you got to look at, okay, what do I want to accomplish? And will that like actually be something that's graspable for someone to look at it? Um, and is that something that like they'll be able to understand what I want them to see? So this is going to be a little hard for me to articulate, I think, but sometimes we like when we make something we'll like throw in more elements than needed this is kind of getting the less is more i remember one of the ones i was working on it like a year ago i really wanted there to be a lot of bright colors in it and ended up just having to like remove some of those because like having purples and greens and reds and pinks and black and and gray and yellow all this stuff all over the place it gets to be so busy that someone looking at it doesn't know where to look and their eyes like start just running all over the place they can they have a hard time processing it so for me it's like when I end up looking at the mock and I'm like, my eyes are drawn to the areas that I want people to focus on, but doing that doesn't distract from the overall big picture of the mock. So like kind of as a whole. Um, also, just like, I'll be honest, I don't normally always know a design is good until I, I run it by someone else. I'm like, hey, I have this, I think, interesting idea. What do you think about it? And they'll be like, that's that's cool. But what if you changed it just a little bit this way and now it's like really solid. And that, that I think that the importance of like getting other people's feedback before you like call something done is 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 is, is, is it's very good to do. Um, I, I th most of the stuff I make, I don't do without showing some beforehand. Just be like, hey, I have this idea. And sometimes like most of them, some will say you, there, there's some other way you can be improved. So trusting other people's judgment, too, is, is important. Um, but sometimes you just don't know until until you sit and stare at it for a few years and then you're like yeah that was good <laughs> yeah 
uh, sorry, I just wanted to add a bit onto with what Masep said about like the how he had like more planned for his box, but he ended up having to cut it. I think that kind of stems from us as builders try when we want to build something. Sometimes we get maybe a bit over ambitious with what we're trying to design, and then mm -hmm. into the building process, we realize, oh crap, maybe I was a bit, maybe I uh overestimated what I was able to do. So I think it's important, especially for like contests when you have time constraints and stuff like that. Is to build within your skill level and just try this and you know you get to like a mostly finished product and see what small things you can improve upon it because if you try to do something that's very overly ambitious you end up like uh getting being stuck at at some point in the mock and then end up having to half ass it uh, uh excuse me but you basically put out something that's like you know not as good as it could have been had you built within your skill level so i think it's important to like you know it's good to be ambitious like you know uh, if you're ambitious you end up putting out like may way better mocks than what you would normally do but you know don't get over ambitious is what i'm i'm basically trying to take away from this yeah i think that no makes one, sense no one to pop the brakes mm. yeah yeah exactly like i think i think like you said it's good to take risks but it's also good to i guess know your limits i suppose yeah yeah, yeah nice also, i think it's just good to have fun you know yeah what about, what about the most you, important ben? thing yeah beautiful well that yeah. brings us uh to the end of that last question there and that brings us to the end of the podcast so thanks guys cool. for that lovely lovely contest related chat there that was that was good fun um could you guys want it to plug this in though Ah, oh, we'll do more, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> hopefully. That's right. Uh, if Next alive. time on the Abyss <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're alive, I'll have you back. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm hoping I can do more. This was fun. And now that I've figured out some better ways of recording here, it's, uh, it's not impossible. So Yeah. Mm. Well, hopefully really. it comes out all right in editing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I reckon. You can, you can just cut out every stupid thing I said and call it a day. Then we'll no. be good. No. So, no. <laughs> it's just it's just two hours of Ben talking to himself. Ben asking a question and then silence. Like, <laughs> wow, that was that was some great thoughts, guys. It really really spoke to me and no one else. It's like an interactive <laughs> podcast. Like the audience gets to talk to me, and I'm just like, oh yes, of course. It's, it's, it doesn't even. It's, 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 it's like those YouTube videos you see where the YouTubers sit there listen to your day. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Why did you remind me those exist? Sorry. I'm sorry. It just popped into my mind. But anyways, uh, yeah, so you can find me on mostly Flickr and Instagram. Instagram mostly at Ezreal underscore the Blue Moon Mockist. I, I post Lego stuff there. I used to post two months, two mocks a month, but now I'm kind of just doing, just posting whenever I feel like it. So, you know, come... If you like what I what I've done uh, for the mock league or any other else, just you know, stick around. We'll have some fun. Beautiful. Bring a pizza and I'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And That's how you find me. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 can more or less find myself the same place as I do. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But there will also be um links in the description to all of you guys' stuff as well. So by all means, guys, check uh, check that out there, and you'll find um you find everything you need. So unless there's yeah. anything else you guys want to say, that's it for the podcast. Thanks for having us, Ben. Babe, no, thanks for having us. No worries at all. It was lovely talking to you guys. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you in the next podcast. <laughs>